Yo, what up, people? My name is Lewis Lee. That's what my mom calls me, at least. And this is Planning Traffic, and we got the crew with us. How's everybody tonight? Hey, good. Good, good. We have Ray. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, tell them who you are and what you do. Yeah, Ray Guarino, Motormouth Radio on Long Island, New York. Broadcasting live every Sunday between 12 and 1. And social media, or just look for Motormouth Radio. Instagram, it's real underscore motor mouth radio and that's where you see the stuff that we do during the week when we're not behind the microphone yep, yep. terry yo cover man six six cat breeder wow <laughs> <laughs> terry go ahead terry you you invited a guest so go ahead and uh well we got, we got the lovely lovely sherry lynn you know she's she's been she's been doing a lot of things you know like you might have seen a beautiful face on overhauling, right? Yeah. You know, and she's got a couple of things that she's working on that she let me know about, but I'm going to let her tell you about it later on. Let, let people introduce yourself, Sherilyn. Hi, everybody. Sherilyn Westridge from Overhauling is where I'm most well known. And uh, Ray, isn't it pronounced Long Island? Yes, Long we Long accept Island. that, yeah. <laughs> we accept that, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, that's the show that everybody kind of knows me from, so that's how I introduced myself. But um, I'm doing all kinds of crazy things now. Uh, i done a few other TV shows that um, you might have seen, uh, and now I'm like, what did I do? I don't know. Rock My RV with Brett Michaels. Yeah. That, that was one of the funner shows that I've worked oh, on. Oh, Brett Michaels. I like him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brett Michaels. He called me Cinderella. Because <laughs> I had to do all the cleaning up around the set, but I—they hired me as a fabricator, and um, and that was a spectacular show. Like really right. fun guys. Now I just you know bounced around in all the different car build shows and stuff. That's cool. That's, that's yeah. an exciting uh, 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 get around, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So on overhauling, I noticed you do a lot of different stuff. I've seen you do interior. I thought you were an interior person, but I've seen you know you've done a lot. So what is your your expertise? That's the thing. I I I know uh, a little about a lot, and um, I I got pigeonholed into. Well, I, I worked at a speedometer shop, so they had me uh, do the the dash and gauges on all the cars. So I did that. Uh, before I was on the show, they never touched the dash. They just left it be. And then, so when I joined, I would pull it out, redo the whole dash, rebuild the gauges, speedometer, everything, made sure it was all 100%. And um, and then I started uh, welding. Actually, it was, uh, I think, my third episode, the director came up and he said, hey, do you know how to weld? And I said, yeah, I know how to weld. And he said, well, you're going to be welding on the next uh, episode. And I said, okay, great. And I never welded in my life. I went out <laughs> and I had four days before we started shooting again. So I yeah. called every guy that I knew that knew how to weld. And I was like, I got to come to your shop. I need to learn to weld in four days. And came back and boom, we started <laughs> welding. And, you know, didn't start out great, but I could do the job. And then, at, you know, when we were shooting every day for a few years, I actually got to be a pretty decent welder, but uh, I I learned body work on the very first build I did. I just thought it was interesting and in how you you know spread material on the car and and all the different aspects of sanding it off, how you do it right, and so um, you know I just kind of I'm interested in all of it. Like it's a frame off restoration, and I pretty much did everything you can do on a on a vehicle. I tried to learn it and. Uh, yeah. And then I started my own shop out there in Orange, uh, City of Orange. So I, then I was doing it all myself, except I never really, really got into the paint and body work because I just think that's a skill that is just uh, refined after a few years, you know. Yeah. Not everybody has that. You know, I just learned something from getting my own car out of the paint shop and then putting it back together. And I learned another facet of automobilia that's very, very detailed and i just talked to my buddy today who's going to take care of me and that's glass door glass oh yeah there are so many adjustments we had a discussion about this last week yeah and, you know front back up down in out and and they were perfect before we 
took him out to take the belt line molding off. But so now I have to have this guy come back and, and just touch it all up again. But what an exacting, you know, an exacting oh, yeah. thing is. And you say, yeah, how, hard, how hard can it be until you try it? Yeah. I, yeah. I got into it for a couple of years where I wanted to do the door glass and, and I enjoyed trying to get it perfect and figuring out how to line everything up. But every car is different. You know, they, there's no standard door glass mechanisms down in there. They're all different. And yeah. so, it, you know, sometimes it can be really frustrating and just getting it in and out. You know, you have to slide it down in there and not break the glass. And it, oh my gosh, right. it's and, and, and you know what could be fun when you have to put it back and it's tinted. That's that's a trick. Yeah. Oh right, <laughs> yeah. I haven't tried that. What does that do? Oh my god, you got to try to you know put tape over it or whatever. You know, uh, try not to scratch the internals and all that. Yeah, because oh. tint will scratch real easy. Yeah, yeah. I never thought of that. And the thing yeah. I found with working on cars that aren't my own is. You don't know what happened to it before. So if you get all those parts in a box and now you have to put them in, that could have been from some other car. You don't know what's bent, what's tweaked, yeah. you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I got going with my flathead. I have a, a Model T and the flathead, oh. they had started taking it apart when I got it. So it, a lot of the parts are in boxes. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so well, will leave. At least you learn from from the best in the industry. I mean, Chip is the is the man. Yeah. Tell us a little. Tell us a little bit about. Um, does Does he share his knowledge? Oh, he he is the best. He really does, and and you know he always has an idea that's better than you, <laughs> but he never puts it that way. He always makes you feel good about it and tries to get you to think of it first, and then he finally just tells you, "Hey, why don't you just twist it to the left and put those over there?" And you say, "Oh." Why didn't I think of that? You know, he's yeah. just so good. At, he comes up with all the answers and he has a he has a trick for everything, you know. There's in and if he doesn't have a trick, he just thinks of it on the spot. He's just the master. And yeah. just super humble about everything. Super humble and, and loves he he's a teacher, you know. He wants mm -hmm. to he wants to teach people and but he's just really good about it. Yeah, mm. he it it was like literally I can't imagine a, a a better part of my life is just learning from that guy and then like i was saying um well like i always say <laughs> um we'd get 25 guys would come in there you know bear brakes would send two guys to help with the brakes and then summit racing would send two guys to help with the parts they sent and so you got 25 guys in there who build cars on their own and everybody knows something that somebody else doesn't know everybody's mm -hmm. got a trick and so Man, I just I learned from every single guy that came through there. They had something to teach you and um, you know, and and you know, you just car guys are fun, you know. And it 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 was hard because I was the only girl on the set. So it was just hard to to pick who I was going to talk to next. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was the funnest time of my life. I was single. So, you know, it was just one of the best times ever. There was just I don't know. It was, it was just fun every day. Nice, nice. Yeah. What What is your uh, favorite car you worked on on the show? Well, we just we just built uh, Impala for uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh yeah. So oh. that was one of the most recent ones. I I just did that oh. in January. Super fun. Uh, the build. I, you know, they're doing a lot of um, late model cars now, which I know nothing about. I you know I'm just kind of scrapping when it comes to late model vehicles. Mm -hmm. So doing the Impala just brought back old times. They brought back some of the old guys to the show. And uh, so we got to do some welding and some body work. And, man, I, it was really fun to build. And then, of course, Shaquille O'Neal, he's, like, just such a humble, sweet, and hilarious person. And his friends are hilarious. Uh, they were making jokes and playing shit. I don't think they showed it on the show, but at some point, his friend was saying, you know, that's enough uh, tricks on each other, you know, enough gags. And he said, you need to just relax here. Just sit down and check. I got you a chair. And as soon as he went to sit down, it was a, some sort of Hollywood trick chair. So of course it just fell apart <laughs> and Shaq goes flying in the floor. And, and, you know, it was just like super hilarious. I think you had to be there for it to be actually was that funny, but no, I can imagine. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to throw Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal and throw him down on the floor, you know. 
Wow. <laughs> what uh, what year Impala is it? 64. Oh. Yeah. Did you have to remove the back seat or push oh, the yeah. firewall forward? Yeah, both. No, we yeah. um actually I'm um, the guy's name is escaping me. It's Jim. I'll come up with it. Anyway, he's a, he played against Shaq on another team. Oh. And uh, he came as our body double. So he came, he was the same height as Shaq. I think he's what, seven two or yeah. Or eight ten or something, and so he was the body. Man. He came and sat in the vehicle, and we measured around him, and uh, we had to remove the back seat, and so we turned the back seat into just a big stereo pod, like it was just a giant build uh, box, you know, and yeah. um, so the whole trunk was full of stereo, the whole back seat was full of stereo equipment, and then um, and then we moved the seat seats back and welded a new floor. So, yeah, so basically, cool. a 64 Impala, a two seater. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, Lewis, you're tall, but can you imagine being so tall you could never drive a sports car? Or Well, no, he has them. He has like Lambos and uh, Ferraris. Yeah. 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 Um, West Coast Customs does a lot of his, his stuff. Mm -hmm. That's where that car came from. They We took it from West Coast Customs. We, you know, stole it from them yeah. and, then, yeah. and then finished it. Nice. Yeah, fun stuff. Wow. So um, I have, I have uh, a video that Terry did of your product, and I'm gonna put oh, a link cool. in the chat room if you don't mind. I mean, do, do yeah, you I have not seen it yet, so. Okay. He, I'm sure he did a great job. Terry's videos are spectacular. Yeah, he's he's the man. So everybody in the chat room and everybody on YouTube. You can uh, hit this link here and check out Terry's uh, video from Coverman sixty six, and uh, you see see what's going on over there. Later after the show, don't go now. <laughs> yeah, don't go. Yeah. Other than that, uh, let's see. Anybody have any questions in the chat room? Let's see what we got over here. Is there anything over here for you? Talk about I don't see anything. Tanks. Ah, it says, what are you building for him? But I don't know who they're asking about. Good morning, guys. Good question. <laughs> so um, how far are you on your car? I'm welding quarters. Uh, I moved out here to Iowa, and I, I had my car in my shop, and I started welding the quarters on, and then I just had to brace them up for the trip, and now it's sitting in an airplane hanger. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's like the dentist with the bad teeth. It's a car builder <laughs> yeah. who never finishes a build. <laughs> yeah. What kind of car is that, Sherilyn? What, what kind of car are you yeah, building? Yeah, uh, 68 GTS. Oh, it's nice. It's got the original 340. And I just I, I rebuilt that. The dash is all done. And then I just started on, on metal work. So that, and it, it, was a, it was a car from up in the Oregon desert, which I oh, don't know yeah. where that is. But not a lot of rust. You Great. Know, so didn't take me long once I get working on it, but I, I don't have a shop right now. So there you go. Yeah. How, how long have you been there in Iowa? In Iowa, it's been like six years. Yeah. 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 Those A bodies are cool. You, you know, they, they've always had a following, but you don't see a lot of them. You really don't see yeah. too, too many of them. I, I don't know why. Maybe a lot of them got wrecked and crushed early on, but. Well, the darts, you know, the dart GTS was, you know, e even the GTS was just a driver. You know, everyone used those as, as get around cars, grocery getters. And, you know, they were back in the day, like in the 80s and the 90s, those were so cheap. You could buy a dart anywhere. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I think a lot yeah. of people probably was a lot of smash ups, a lot of people who just didn't care about them. <laughs> I, I remember that. back at, like in the took... 80s and the 90s, I was super into Mopar and, uh, and okay. people used to try to give me Chrysler 300s. Just take oh, it. Really? Wow. Polaris, because they're so big, you know, and the oh, gas we prices need, were crazy. We need parts for one right now. My co-host has a 300. Actually, it's a new port that was converted to a 300. He needs new port parts, and it's they're hard to find, boy. Oh, yeah. hard to find. Yeah, because yeah. nobody wanted. I mean, I had a couple of friends who just put them in the junkyard because nobody wanted it. It was just, you know, California sure. and the gas and all that. Along sure. with the Grand Fury. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Furies are good. But I would, you know what, to see a Grand Fury convertible? Yeah. 
Oh, Sharp yeah. car. Even yeah. even the even the you know the hard tops, they just have nice lines, nice C pillars. Now in retrospect, they look really, really cool. Back then they were just big old big old cars, you know. Yeah, but yeah, right. big old cars back then, you know. I yeah. mean, like no one thought of well, a few people, I guess, but who really thought about it? I mean, my father, he had a a Chevelle, 70 Chevelle uh 455, 454, and it got stolen. And he comes home with a deuce and a quarter. I'm just yeah. like <laughs> Wait a minute now. This in the corner is no joke. Now, <laughs> now, but I mean, I'm coming from this this green stripe, this green car with a white stripe, thinking, oh man, I just got about another 15 years or whatever, and then I could drive this thing or whatever, you know, 10 years, and yeah. then he comes and gets a deuce and a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah deuce and quarters are hot around here, boy. Yeah. Four door. Yeah. Oh. But like Four I said, this the court is hot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, so what's the next car show coming up for everybody? Because I know SEMA's canceled. Oh, it's terrible, so isn't it? I can't believe it. They should put it back on. They should realize their mistake and then yeah. come back to SEMA. Yeah, hit the switch. <laughs> yeah. It was just a joke. It was just a joke. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. We're back. <laughs> Um, we had our we had our car show. Um, it was in August. It's like mid August, and we went ahead with it, and everybody came out like gangbusters. We got more people there. It was a record breaking year after thirty four years of doing hmm. that show. Broke the record, and uh, yeah, people were just like looking for action, looking for something to do. So, oh yeah, if only they would have had SEMA, it would have been the biggest year ever. I bet. Yeah, because everybody's been cooped up and. Yeah. You know, and that's that's everybody's time to, to cut loose a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we don't we didn't have real big problems here, so everybody was able to come out. You know, nobody it wasn't really dangerous and mm -hmm. nothing bad happened. You know, it was like because we're also, you know, we're out in the country. So it's not like, you know, the problems they have in the big cities and stuff. And, yeah. We're kind of stuck in a lockdown zone. Yeah. 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 Oh, we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing I'm, good. I'm, I'm in yeah. Ohio, so we're pretty pretty open. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I, so I, you know, I had to speak with a woman today, Lewis, and she was the nicest woman I've talked to in a long time, and she's in Ohio. So yep. Ohio people, man, she, she hooked me up big time, just so nice and friendly and just happy to help me out as a customer. Yeah. And uh, that, that was good. That was very cool. Yeah, that's, the Midwest is full of nice people, right? That's I don't know. I just like it. It's, it's the yeah. nicest people you're going to find. Everybody's like really sweet. But I lived in Bedford-Stuyvesant for a couple years. Did you? And Brooklyn people are super nice, too. Everybody's just helpful in a different way. You yeah. Know? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends where you go, right? Yeah, they find something yeah. off the back of the truck. Here, yeah. I got you a TV. <laughs> Let me help you. <laughs> Deals like that? Yeah. No, but I noticed that like driving in driving in Los Angeles, everybody's like me first, me first, trying to get ahead of you. And then I moved to New York, and everybody's like, "Go, go, let's all get there, let's all get there, everybody, come on!" Like they let you in, you know? Yeah. It's like a whole different thing. It's like I think you were here on a good day because yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was wondering. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of place Maybe it was the blonde hair. That, that's <laughs> what it is. Maybe they knew they knew who you were. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm an equal opportunity blocker on the road. Blonde, oh, yeah. brunette, redhead, <laughs> guy, man. I don't, I don't care. It's like if you're screwing with me, you're getting it back. It's like that's the way it goes. You know, that's the rule of the road, man. <laughs> so, I, you know, I taught both of my kids to drive when I and and even locally. Uh yeah, we're in a suburb, so we're local. And you know, you're driving down a road and and there's a you know, there'd be a, a cross street coming in and someone would come out of the cross street in front of them. And I remember my older daughter was like, oh, what'd they do that for? I was like, listen, it's you snooze, you lose. You were approaching them with caution, which is what you should do. But they saw that you were going slow enough and they took it. They took, they just took the shot. I said, that, there you go. I said, get ready for that. I said, it's going to happen all the time. And they're going to start making lefts in front of you. And I said, that doesn't mean you should speed up to stop it, I said, but you have to be aware of it because it's just the way people drive. You know, it's unfortunate. That's, that's called a life lesson right there. That's a yeah. life lesson she learned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody in the comments is talking about pop-up shows in New Jersey. 
Yeah, we've been having a bunch of them here too. Yeah. 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 That's see, I cool. um I book uh celebrities for <clears throat> for shows all over the country. And it, it's been so so messed up, so I haven't booked anybody this year. But I'm gonna start probably next month, um, start really hitting it for next year, try to get you know stuff booked for next year. Nice. Yeah. But this year was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. On to the next 2021. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna really ramp up for that. Um, hopefully, it, everything opens up, man. Like New York and California, man, they're still. Yeah, I, I get I get an extra year of surprise because I got a brand new car in my garage, painted, all the trim is done. I mean, this thing is ready to go, and there's nowhere to go with it. <laughs> so <laughs> like, it'll yeah. be fresh next year too. There yeah. you go. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you gotta enjoy it, man. Still take it out. Still take oh, it yeah. out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You about your GTO? Yes. Yes, they'll take it out. Absolutely. You know, you get the thumbs up, you make people happy, man. You know, I'll yeah. tell you, I, uh, I, I had to drive it. Like I brought it home last Saturday, and I had to take it from the one shop that I work at over to their other shop a few towns away to have a guy look at it and then come home. And, you know, I, would, I was getting thumbs up when it was in Prime. Because it was a prime, gray prime with a little bit of a lavender touch to it. It looked kind of cool. Literally, a guy jumps. At, there were like five people at a bus stop. This dude ju leaps out of the off the sidewalk into the street with his thumbs up like this. <laughs> like, dude, the bus is coming. Get back on the sidewalk. I got you. <laughs> You will get somebody killed, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you know, because now it's all shiny. Everything is attractive, like you know, and the color is a little unique. So it's not like it doesn't look like your average Toyota and Nissan on the road. You know, everything is silver and white and and gray these days. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, all the yeah. cool colors. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They bring cars, bring people together, man. Yeah, for That's sure. Right. Cars, music, and love. Yeah. And That's how I met Terry at the at SEMA. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it that was 2018? Was it? Yeah, to, well, it wasn't last year. Was it? Last year, it was last year. Seemed might have been last year. You're right. You're right. Yeah, it was last year because my brother came out with me. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah you, you were at the um, at Boss Hog booth. The Boss Hog booth. That's right. Yeah, yeah. See, that was one of the. That was one of the rare. Mike top Lanier was there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I met all you guys out there. Yeah, yeah. Super fun. So, Sherry, out of all the things you've done on the cars, you talked about all the different things you did, the interior and, and welding and all. What do you gravitate to? Like, you know, everything finds its own level. What level did you find that you tend to really like doing and that you're best at? I think it was welding and bodywork is, okay. is what I loved. And I, you know, when I, like I said, you know, when you're doing it every day, then you get good. So, um, yeah. When I went back, I hadn't done it in a while, so it took a minute, like, to get back in the swing of things. Yeah. But it's just what I don't know. I feel like that's that's like art to me is like doing art because um, my whole life I've been a painter, you know, just with oil paints and, and acrylics, okay. just you know, painting <laughs> portraits or whatever. And uh, I don't know. That feels the same to me. Like you're creating something. You know, you're making a line. If you're doing body work, you know, you're like creating the line on the car yeah. and trying to get it perfect and same thing with welding, you know, and, and grinding the metal down, trying to make it look really nice, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those things. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I can do the gauges and I, I wired, I probably wired about 40 cars front to back or maybe more. I don't know. I, I, uh, and it's interesting, you know, but it just is, you know, there's just not that love for wiring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think no. I met a couple guys that love wiring, but they were a little, yeah <laughs> yeah we that, are. That, that, that's what it, it takes like, yeah. yeah now with the wiring what what company did you like the best out of the different companies i'm sure you used a lot of different ones um you know what m and h m and h is hands down the yeah. best they make the best harnesses and yeah. uh you know back right when we were doing it, they were a small company but i think i think if you uh delve into it i think m and h makes harnesses for several people and, right. uh, a lot of their repair stuff, a lot of their uh, ends, you know, ends, yeah. and, and they, that's that's how I got introduced to them, and they are a fantastic company. They, they're yeah. they had a catalog that was quite extensive. Good company. Yeah. Really, yeah. really good guys, and um, I went, you know, to their 
factory a few times to get specific things that I needed, and it is pretty cool. Like everybody who works there is awesome. Where are they located? Good, good friends. They're in uh, down there in, in Orange. They're they're in SoCal, but I can't I can't remember what street they're on. Yeah, so California. But, yeah. Uh, okay. No, no, just good. It's we, been a while. I yeah. can I can drive you there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Wow. <laughs> I, yeah, I I went there maybe twice or three times, and uh, but mostly, you know, Tom would just send us the harnesses that we needed, and that's that. Yeah, that that's something that's come a long way, uh, especially with the conversions, the, all the conversions everybody's doing, and, and even the light conversions. Those uh, the big companies definitely have responded, and, and their products are spot on. Yeah. Uh, good stuff. Yeah. They replace those bus fuses to like uh, the the regular type of fuse that you have to you know nowadays, which is Blade fuse, yeah, the ATO type and ATC. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. Both my sixty nine my sixty nine Camaro and my sixty uh, was it seventy one Chevelle. I just as soon as I got the car, I ripped all the wires out. I was like, we're going American Motor Wire and and yeah. TSI, you know, for the for the LS conversion. Get rid of all this stuff. And yeah. and what I like about these new these new harnesses. They give you the option to put options in the car that never came. Right. You know, yeah. my, my car never came with electric window, but they got them now because I'm lazy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. All lots I can do without, but electric windows, I mean, like, especially if you have four four windows, you know, like, let's take that 71 Chevelle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, the lean across. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I'll tell you something, Terry. You know, I when I was doing my car, I was thinking about doing electric window conversion. And I said, man, it'll be so nice. You know, it'll be just so, so nice to do. And then I just thought, I said, you know what? I got to keep this real. I got to keep this as old school as possible. I got to, I got to have the pain of rolling up and down. You know, <laughs> that's how, that's how I grew up with this car. That's how it always was. And that's how I had to keep it. So, well, and, you know, you, you, you had the car all your life though. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that makes a little bit of a difference. Yeah. You see, yeah. I tell you the reason what happened was when I was building my 69 Camaro, this had to be in Jesus, my 2007. I was doing my 69 Camaro, and I was like, there's no compromise. There's going to be an LS and six-speed in this thing. I'm not – because that was that was the transition. I used to do tune ports, putting them into the cars. but And I told you guys before, I just skipped over the LT. The LT, yeah. The LT1. Get rid of that crap. And so I was getting the LS, and I was just like, you know what? You know, I thought the same thing. You know what? I want that allure of driving a 69 Camaro and roll-down windows and all that, <laughs> right? So – my car wasn't ready, and one of the cars, my 80Z28, I had at that time, the one I had since high school, which had the tune port, it was nice, but something, re um, it was still in the body shop. And uh, my friend, he had a whole bunch of cars. I said, Terry, won't you just take my 70, 68 Camaro, or Firebird? He had 68 Firebird. And, you know, I was like, I'm not going to go to the show. You know, grab one of my cars. Matter of fact, I like to have both of my cars there. I was like, all right. He had those rolled down windows, right? So I'm driving on the New York State threw away to go to Bear Mountain, the big car show and everything like that. And it was like such a nice day. And Jimi Hendrix came on. I was like, you know what? I want that feel of like, I don't know, Woodstock, you know, going up the woods. You know, let me roll these windows down, right? And I rolled down, you know, like, okay, cool. Yeah, chilling. Got a little cold. And I was like, <laughs> 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 you know, going back and forth with that, like trying to find the right opening and all that. I was like, I, it, I still remember it was a whole good night. Wednesday night. Thursday morning, you know, I called up, you know, like getting some electric windows in there. <laughs> it's like, not so hard. I know. It's such a challenge sometimes just to go to a car show, what you have to put up with. I understand. I, you know, I was like, what was the company? What is it? Um, uh, what was the name of that company? Oh, they, they black. Oh, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. But I, <laughs> up, I was like, it's six nine come out. You got electric windows. Yeah, we got a kick pull, but bricks, whatever. What? I, let's get done. Send them. <laughs> yeah, because that was horrible. <laughs> I, I lived with it my whole life. I, I have my first car now with electric windows. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All my, my daughter. Life, I just had the roll up, roll downs. There you go. My daughter is twenty one. She's twenty one now. My daughter is yeah. twenty one now, but I had a. Probably six years ago, I bought a Grand Grand Am, and it had window, you know, roll down windows. So she gets in the car and she's like, "Dad, where's the the window button?" Where's yeah. the button? <laughs> like, what do you mean, where's the button? 
She's like, how do you roll a window down? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Pretty funny. New Relic. That's the name of the company. New Relic. New Relic. <laughs> yes. I don't know them. Yeah, New Relic. They, they, yeah. they, they got the windows, you know, the whole mechanism for electric windows. And yeah. then, yeah, New Relic. Yeah, I tell you, I got, I'm doing a 67 Chevelle now. If there's an electric window for that little wing window, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like, can't get too spoiled, okay? I'd, I'd like to see how they do that because that one's, yeah, that's a. Yeah, come on. Did they have one that the, lazy. Lincoln's, the Lincoln hat. Did Cadillac, didn't the Cadillac have an electric wing window? Uh, Caddy might have. I know, I know Lincoln yeah. did. Lincoln did, yeah. So maybe Caddy. Okay. I'm lazy, man. I'm telling you. I was, you know, hit that button. <laughs> Okay, so do y'all want to know what Terry shot a video for? Yeah. yeah. Tell him. Yeah, exactly. So I started a, a new company. Um, I went out to Australia, and I met. Uh, they had me come out for Motorex. I was giving away a trophy and all this stuff. And uh, I signed autographs in this guy's booth. His name's Malcolm Wood. So he's got Mal Wood Auto over there in Australia, and he was making these hydraulic clutch pedal kits to convert your pull cable clutch into hydraulics. And it was the best thing. Hey, there, there's Sweet. Terry's. So I asked him, hey, can I make these in America? Can I bring these over and do them for all the Camaros, all the Mustangs, everything? So I brought him, brought you know his idea over and now I make these out here in Iowa. Like I have them stamped out and uh, and make them. See, I got one too, Terry. Okay, yeah, so you see you put the silver. You you put the cylinder up on the on the mechanism instead of having it out on the firewall, which is nice. There you go. That's why and I'm just, the only one that makes a kit for the Mustang, the '71 to '73s. Uh, yeah. Because you can't put anything on the firewall, so our kit works for that. We're I think we're the only ones out there with the kit for that. And it's seriously, you just bolt it in, and uh, it you know we've got the clutch pedal. It, we do the geometry so it lands right where your stock pedal would land, and then. Right. Uh, you know, you just bolt it in, and you're you're golden. That's it. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I saw you didn't make it for for. I I looked at the listing. I didn't see uh, a bodies on. I well, I didn't see Pontiac. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. Was it no, uh, we got uh, tri fives, F one fifties, the Corvettes, C threes. Um, we got the all the Mustangs. Started off with just all the Mustangs, just to have you know one one and done. And so every year Mustang. Then we got most of the years of Camaros, uh, and then. Now we have the Chevelle, because what we're doing is if somebody, uh, you know, uh, Terry wanted one from for his Chevelle, so he sent us his carrier, which he's got. And then, um, so you send the carrier and your pedals, and we'll just custom make one for whatever you're wanting to build. You know? Now, that should work in the across the board on GM uh, A-bodies. Yeah. Because I know I have Chevelle clutch pedals in my Pontiac, so, you know, I, I, everything in there is, is the same. So There you, you go. Not, so that'll work. It, it should yeah, also be on the and Monte Carlo as well. Yep. Right, right, right. Yeah. So what that's, that's what I've been doing, and just uh, uh, that this is in our we're in our second year now, so it's just starting to catch on, and we're just getting all the models out there that we can, you know, to just cover everything. But you know, it's hard. You gotta make one at a time, like with Terry. That you know, it took what six weeks or something to for us to design it. <laughs> What's that? He was out partying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how how do how do you find um, how how can people buy them? Do they go to your website or oh yeah, Malwood USA. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, if you go to Malwood, you'll end up in Australia, but it's it's MalwoodUSA.com, and uh, you'll see all the models there. Um, okay. We're slow on getting models onto the computer because I'm I'm not a computer girl. I'm a car builder, so uh, yeah. the the Chevelle's not up yet. But just ask if you know, and the phone number's up there. No, I the think website. I saw Chevelle. I saw Chevelle on the site. Yeah, well, that's because Terry made me put it up there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Terry should be the last one talking about a website. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got I got one of my buddies building me up a, a, a hellacious website. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I bet you he can't wait to get the stuff to do it. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, Good, yeah. I feel better. <laughs> yeah, okay. 
<laughs> you get out in the shop and you forget to come in and, and film everything and put it up. But hey, you got a million videos out there. You, you're, yeah. you're a step ahead. Yeah, you're doing <laughs> It'll get done. It'll get done. Uh, are your cheeks getting red? <laughs> well, you know what you think about the, the video you got, Charlie. That was that was nice. Thank you very much. What's that? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for you to see. I'm waiting to see what you think. What, what you think about the video I put out there? I know. I went, see. I trust Terry. I I told him put the video out there, sight unseen. I, I know you did a good job. She said, "Go oh, yeah. for it." It's yeah. Trust, trust. Yeah, I appreciate that. Nat natural talent there. There you go, right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, go yeah. ahead and ask her. Okay, Cheryl, let, let me ask you a question. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm scared now. I'm scared. You, you're, you're familiar with the tri fives, right? Because you got the bracket for the tri five. You just said, right? Yeah. What is your favorite year for the tri five? I can't tell the difference. They're all the same. They're all the same. <laughs> it's, it's a '57 Chevy, and then someone corrects me. No, it's a '56. I say. All right. 56, she says. Okay, beautiful. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> she said they're all the same. She didn't say oh, no, she said 56. <laughs> I meant 56. Terry will take a win any way he can get it. That's okay. He, he oh, deserves yeah. a few. He's yeah. behind. I want to get that. Call. I, so, how do you tell the difference? The well, fenders. I'll say it fenders. The fenders, tail lights, body light. I'll say it this way. You know how you had the three bears? No, tell the 55 me. 55 just looks like it's too plain, all right? The 57 looks like it's too much going on there. The front bumper, it looks like someone punched the 56 in the mouth and it's, the lip got off fat. Where the 56 is just beautiful. It's just, I mean, even when you get the Nomad and the way they did the, the two-tone the two, uh, on there with the roofing, it, it's just a more beautiful car. Although I do like the little vents on the '57 on above the headlight. I do like that whole cold air induction thing that they had. That's, but, a subtle, uh, that's a subtle cue. That also gave you peaked headlights, which the other two cars don't have. Yeah. yeah well, okay. But, but we all agree that the '56 is a better looking car. I understand. No, no. For you, we, for that. you, we're, yes, we do. We're letting you say that right now. Yes. I, <laughs> see, you know what? I never really got into it. I'm now. I'm intrigued. I'm gonna have to go and really look at all the differences and you know why you know, like it's, 56 it's, is better. You know, it's like it's like um if you had a 67, 68, 69 Camaro standing side by side, you would see the uh, difference of them all. Yeah, but that's it's not as drastic on the Camaros as it is on the Tri Fives. Yeah, this is true. But I mean, like, but most yeah, people totally. I know most people are like, I like a 57 Chevy, but then they're talking about a 55 or whatever, you know, they just that name, just 57 and 55, are the most popular name for the Chevy. Yeah, Chef. you know, people do that to me all the time. You know, I'll be in a gas station. guys say, hey, man, I love that car, GTO. I had one in high school. Like, what year is that? <laughs> he goes, it's my favorite. What is that, a 66? Like, no, it's a 65. It's yeah. like, if it was your favorite, you should know what the hell year it was, you <laughs> 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 That's what the gas pump and takes off. <laughs> yeah, they get it wrong all the time. Like, like I said, there you go. The GTOs look Kind of similar, but there's differences if you know the car. You know, the only, the only way, I can pull that, the only way you can, someone can pull it off is maybe 66 or 67. Other than the, you know, like the bumper and the grill, I mean, the tail lights. Okay. Uh, no, no. No. The three that are different is. Yeah. Well, actually, not even so much. I'm going to say four, five, and six, because between four and five, four is the only year with horizontal headlights. The right. only. Year. Right, and then five, six, seven had stacked headlights, so right. you have to go between a five and a six, which is again subtle. It's subtle. I don't know. A five and a six really isn't that subtle. If you don't know the cars, like you, if you know them, you know. I mean, they both have stacked headlights. They both have the right. same bumper. You know, the tail lights are different. Similar, but but the whole body of the car is different. It's it got similar. longer each year. Yeah. They got longer. You know, like I said, subtle differences. So yeah, that's the Tri Five Chevy. I think is. I mean, unless you went, let's th let me think now with T birds. Uh, if you, you'd have to go from like battle birds up to round bir or bullet birds, like 57, 58, 59, or actually 58, 59, 60 T birds are very different. You know, I like the bullet one, you know, out of those, yeah, the bullet one's a better looking car. Those are those, they, they got sleeker, rounder. 
Yeah, mm. nice. Again, you know, you can you can argue this about almost any car. You really can. It comes out of pro. It, it, just, it just seems so obvious that everyone agrees that the fifty six is the better of the three. But moving well, on, you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems like you really put that out there for everybody. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's best. that's the famous question every week. Right. <laughs> I wish I but knew in advance so I could. Oh, but he didn't get shut down, so that's okay. Terry didn't get like he didn't get the knife in the heart, which is good. I'm glad. I like to, I don't like to see my friends get hurt. So yeah, I could have cool. just picked 57 in the most popular year, you know, and then uh -oh. you know that's the thing. You can say 55 to him and he'd say, Oh no, not another one, but don't say 57. <laughs> I'm looking at the card here. 55 over 57 in a second. I, I just that 57 is <laughs> Yeah. Scott, Scott Do you ask put in this 56 every too. time because Thank you, Scott. someone in the comments over here says, "Go ahead, Terry, ask her the question." Yeah. <laughs> Mac man is the Brian. He started this whole thing. Did he? <laughs> tonight. I really wish you guys would have let me know. I really oh, could have with some goodness. Tonight. Mm -hmm. Well, tonight, yeah, but I mean, he's he's only just opening the door to your psyche, man. He's you know, let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> we go so, through every time we have a guest. Uh -huh. I was thinking it. <laughs> so what would be your, your dream car? Like, what would be the first thing you would grab if you had a pocket full of money? Well, you know what? Well, okay, with a pocket full of money. Uh, <laughs> or, wait a minute, wait a minute. Or what would you want to build? What would be your favorite build? A, a 69 GTX. Nice. Well, See, I couldn't afford the X, so I got the GTS. Yeah. Hey. And You know what? You know, but it may just, be to that it may be harder depending on the car to build the s than it is the x just because of parts yeah. and you know the uh the community yeah yeah and you know there it's, it's the the cars that that you had before that you want back it's the the 66 charger that was yeah, the one that's, that that's... i always think about it why did i sell that you know right yeah and yeah. I, I knew it was a it was driving away. I started crying like a little baby. Like, what the heck? <laughs> we all have. Like, like, yeah. Because I had gotten a, a 69 Super B. And so Ooh. I couldn't afford all that, you know. So I just had to sell one and just, I can't keep two cars. So I sold the 66 Charger. Man, I, I watched it drive away and I thought, what have I done? Yeah. yeah. My baby. That's a universal constant. Yeah. yeah. We'll go but through that. I really like that style of that. Now that was a unique car. That really yeah. was with the fold down seats in the back and and the you know the Marlin like rear rear, rear uh, window treatment. I mean, yeah. I, I have a picture of my of my GTO in the in the winter of seventy seven. We had a heavy snowfall and the way it drifted on the back of the car. I, I actually pulled the car out in the street and my brother took the picture. The the snow even curved around the rear. A glass and it looks like a 66 charger just with the top in white it's yeah. really a weird looking first thing it says damn it looks like a charger it's crazy that was a big car yeah uh, you said you could put your surfboard in there it was just like the best yeah, that was a huge car it had a big you know yeah that, and i'm thinking about it, it fast back but it was a big did you have the hideaway headlights oh yeah yeah i think i think uh, most of them did was that an option i mean that was that was standard was it I can't remember. Mm. I had them on my uh, 70 Cougar XR7. That has hideaways. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I miss the 66 Charger because they're like, they're, they're just like round like that with, looks like teeth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, it had the, the, yeah. the, you know, grill that went, you know, and had the little centerpiece in the center. That was a nice yeah. car. That was a nice big car. You know? That was, yeah. yeah. Dina says, yes, they were standard. Okay. Yeah. So long ago. Yeah, I remember when I sold my '71 Cuda. I, that was that was a tearjerker. Yeah. A lot of people don't know I had a Cuda. They think you know, I'm strictly GM, but I had a Cuda. I had a '71 yeah. Challenger. Yeah. Okay. Convertible. I oh, sold right. that. You know what they're worth now? Everybody's yeah. got their Mopar secret. It's yeah. okay. Let it out. Listen, I had a '77 Chevette. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. That's not the same thing. No. Oh. That's not the same thing. <laughs> I had a dart for a weekend. How about that? Oh, uh, uh, I I told you <laughs> Wait, I gotta tell you a story about the Chevette though. Liz yeah. just came unglued and admitted the Chevette. <laughs> listen, listen. It was a two-door. 
<laughs> and and <laughs> when I graduated, we all go to Cedar Point. This you, you it's the um, roller coaster <laughs> capital of the world, right? Cedar Point. So we drive this car, right? I follow the bus, the school bus. <laughs> On the way home, I'm like, man, we got to get home. It's late. You know, I'm tired. So I'm doing 70 miles an hour all the way home. This is an 87, so the speed limit was still 55. Dude, when we got off the exit to get gas, the car wouldn't cut off. It was so hot and oh. tired. It was, it wouldn't turn off. I turned the key off, took it out. It was still running. Wow. <laughs> that is too funny. I, I have a Chevette story. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please share it. My sister had one. <laughs> and um, I had sold my car, and I was in between buying another car. And I was, <laughs> I was in college, and I there's this gold digger there. And I was just like, yo, how you? I didn't want to tell her name, Lori. You want to check out my ride? I got a Chevette. I'm not a Chevette. I said a vet. Uh -huh. <laughs> you got no vet. I was like, yeah, just sitting right outside. Let's go. I'll give you a ride home. Come on, dog. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> we go up to the car, right? Way up because I parked it way up at the top of the hill, you know? And um, she sees the car and she's like, this ain't no vet. This is a Chevette, you know? Like, <laughs> right? So she didn't want no, she, she walked back. She, she wanted to take the bus, right? Really? So a week later, she took the bus over a Chevette. She took the bus. She 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 was she felt she cannot be seen in the it's cool with the bus, I guess, right? <laughs> a couple days later, you know, probably about a week later, I rolled up in my GTA in Trans Am, like '88. Oh. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then now she's like, "Yo, Terry, let's go for it. Get out of here. Get on that bus. You ain't get on this. the bus. That's right. Get on the bus. Want to roll wow. in, in my vet? Roll my vet." It's, it's going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> got <a> old man. <laughs> yeah, fixed her, right? <laughs> going to diss the vet, man. Come on, you don't do that. <laughs> that little box. <laughs> yeah. We had a, we had it for a minute. We all started a K car club. Ooh. Everybody went out and bought a K car. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> this is like the year 2000. Was that Pretty a good. car? Yeah. Huh? It was front wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Aries K. Oh, that's right. There's an Aries and a Reliant. The 2.2, yep. that 2.2 liter engine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a one, the two tone car. blue one? Huh? Did you have a two tone blue one? Or tan? Did you do silver? Okay. Oh, it? okay. <laughs> Just a messed up silver looking old paint junker. My father had hey. a $600. <laughs> hey, as long as he got you there and back. Reliant yeah. K. No, he had, the, he had the Reliant. No, he had the. What what Reliant one? K? <laughs> what was a Dodge and what was a Plymouth? I'm trying to figure out which one he had because yeah, he had the Reliant. He had the Reliant. <laughs> and he's like, I can't this car. <laughs> I can't this. Why'd you buy it? <laughs> now you know, but at the time, guys that were like in their thirties, early forties, like that's that was like a good value for the money, and you could get a convertible and you know, they got great reviews. So if you were guy, if you were reading like uh you know, consumer reports. You know, it was kind of like a safe bet, I think. Mm. You know, I mean, we all laughed at it, but, you know, we were still driving fossil fuel consumers, so. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> he said, yeah, I'm going to upgrade my car from the Gremlin. He had a Gremlin with a black with a red stripe. <laughs> I feel like you're making this up. <laughs> I, wish I, could. I wish I could. I wish I could. Yeah. Hey, told, Gremlin, Gremlins are hot right now, boy, if you can find one. I always like gremlins. I've always really? liked them. Yeah. I mean, especially when you're a little kid that got that little back window in the back. Yeah. You know? yeah. The but guy not, across um, the street from me, he put some wheels on it, dude. Yeah, I think you could put any size wheel on the back of that. I mean, wide. Yeah. These wheels are really wide. Yeah. Yep. They don't look bad. I mean, I've seen a pace with wheels on it, and I'm like, it didn't look bad. No. Yeah, you put it, you, you get a you shoehorn a 401 into one of those things. You know, they were. They were sharp cars. Yeah, they yeah. were fast. Yeah, the, the guy across the street from me. Yeah, it was fast, fast. Um, yeah. Alan said uh, three hundred four was fast. Yeah, the Gremlins. Yeah, it's a small yeah. Car. Gremlins with the three hundred four. Yeah, that would go fast. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, you don't need a lot. Yeah, it was a light car. It wasn't that heavy. 
The problem with those cars were everyone I ever saw and worked on the door strikers failed and the door, the doors never want to close. The striker would, would crack out of the, uh, the door, the door post frame. They were just, uh, you know, I guess I they were trying to lighten them up a little bit, you know, so you have to go in there and weld them up, weld a big washer in there or something. Yeah. Yeah. I had that problem with the Camaro. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I guess it's from years of the Camaro, the door sagging. Because door sagging, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a yeah, long the door. The yeah. gravel didn't sag. It was just, it was just too light of a metal. Yeah. Oh, the actual striker. Yeah, they would just yeah. crack. The whole area would just yeah. crack out. So hey, I got a question for you. Have you guys did any car, any suicide doors? Have you ever done any of those? Like a Lincoln? Yeah. You're talking about like from scratch. Yeah. Ooh, boy, that's tough. Oh, like creating it? Yeah. I want to do, yeah, I got yeah. a 77 uh, coupe, and I think I'm going to do it. But I found um, I found a guy making them in California, um, Joe from uh, Low Rider Magazine. Did you see his um, his uh, Hell Dorado? Uh-uh. It was at SEMA, not last year, but the year before. It was in okay. Yeah, I wasn't out there. Oh, my God. You should see this car. And uh, he had suicide doors on it. But the guy that did it for him made a kit. So I think I'm gonna go with that. It's really beefed up kit, man. Yeah. Oh, you made the kit, yeah. Yeah. So, did, what does the kit work on? Is anything? I'm not sure. Well, he made it for that car, so I think he's oh, okay. selling them. I think he's selling them, or I'm gonna just steal ideas. No, I told I Joe. Do yeah, I told Joe. I was like, "Listen, bro, you gonna see a lot of stuff off your car on mine." <laughs> You know what? He's got the kit. Why reinvent the wheel? Just go with yeah. what works, man. And just, you know, that's the time you pony up the money and you just, you save yourself a lot of headaches. There you go. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. up the hell Dorado right now. Oh, so wait till you see it. Listen, every, I took, I took real, real detailed pictures of it from my magazine. And every time I look at the pictures, I see something different in the paint. Like the paint job is so, like he has like graphics inside of it. And you don't see them from every angle. Like you, we were walking up to it and it looked just like a maroon car. When we got closer, then we seen smoke. Then we seen lines. Then we seen it, it was just. And then when I got home and looked at the pictures, I'm looking at them like, wait, I didn't see that. And every time I look at them, I see something different in the paint. Now, whose car is it? Uh, Joe from Low Rider Magazine. Does he does he drive that car? Or is it just a showpiece? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, he takes it around. It's been to a lot of shows, but it is no joke. Talk about it, that. it was a, you know, the, the I think it's a 70, so that's a front wheel drive. Yeah. But they made it a real wheel uh, drive. No, no. Oh, oh, Eldorado. I'm sorry. Eldo. Yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've seen it. I've that's seen a nice this. car, right? Yeah. And right outside. That was a beautiful car. Yeah. yeah. Cut the whole roof out, made it all glass. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. As soon as I pulled up the picture, I thought, oh, okay, I remember that car. Yep. It was that um, Valvoline or no. What was that one out front? Pennzoil. What does that kid go for, Lewis? The, uh, the I'm not sure. I haven't, looked at, I haven't looked at it in a while, but uh, I'm going to have to go back on and, and check it out. But it was really beefed up. Nice. The guy did a really nice job. It has to be, yeah. It was like yeah. glass, man. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. I'm gonna do some suicide doors on my GTS on the, on the yeah, back. Yeah, I was just said that, that new SUV I bought. Well, it's not new, but the one I just bought that's got suicide doors to it. It's pretty cool. You got to reach in and open the rear door, and it opens and it opens kind of and kind of like full. It has a really weird articulation to it. Uh, yeah, I don't know who figured that out. That's Toyota for you, you know. Yeah, but yeah, so I think I'm gonna do it. Um, I, yeah. I keep putting myself into a rabbit hole, like you know. Yeah, but you know, but you know, the way to do that is you you decide on all that real hard structural stuff first. You don't want to mm -hmm. go back and do that later. You know, you want that yeah. all done when you're in rough. You know, yeah. uh, I'm gonna try it. Point. If not, I'll just duct tape it and keep on rolling. You put the 56 <laughs> parking lights in it. You know, when it's in bare metal, not when it's in paint. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's this duct tape? Be like, yo, it's hash marks. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, they make duct tape in, in every color now, boy. You, you can get away with it. They even make it with uh, leopard stripes. Camo, whatever you want. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> duct tape. <laughs> oh, man. I love my piece here. 
Yeah, it's sweet. Are you happy, Terry? Oh man, I can't wait to put when, it, when are you gonna install that? One day. No, no. Day. You know what? I'm gonna install it probably this weekend just so I know where it is. Really? I don't you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be ready for it and 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 not have it. You know, I want to be able to be oh it's, it's there. Did you, know? you get the throw out bearing with that too, Terry? You got the whole whole deal or what? I didn't get the I have a throw out bearing, but I'm gonna get one from her. She tell she got throw out bearings. And um, what else? And shifters for uh, T fifty sixes and. Well, what here's the thing, that's that's all um, from Malcolm Wood in in Australia. He uh -huh. makes them. He's he's been in this game for like forty years, and mm -hmm. so he makes all that stuff. But now that the COVID hit, I can't get it. He he can't get it out of customs. Really. Everything is taking you know, two months just to ship it over. So I just took it off. That's it. And so now we're just doing the pedal kits because I make them here. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. just doing all the USA made shit and stuff. No, you're good. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. No, you're all right. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So so right now it's just the pedal kits, but you're right. He does. He makes badass little short shifters and stuff. And so we'll get him back up, you know, in the next year or two, get it back up online. But for now, yeah. what Terry's got, that's that's the deal. That's exciting. Yeah. See, I, Terry was like, oh, you should put one in your Cadillac. I was like, man, I ain't putting a stick in a Cadillac. I'm going low and slow. <laughs> I'm winning a second. That'd be so <laughs> funny. I'm going to win a second. A Cadillac with a stick shift. Sure. You know, same. I would imagine the same setup. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. One in a Catalina or, you know, like a yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those big cars were great with four speeds in them. Listen, it's hard to lean if you got a shift. You know what I mean? You can't be pimping, <laughs> shifting. Exactly. You'd have to. You'd have to have the long shift arm. Yeah. yeah. Some kind you, of modified you, thing. You put the sh you put the shift in before you lean. Click. Okay, then you start. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? That might look not look bad. Put a high shift in it. Way yeah, up by the steel. One of the big, you know. Yeah, like a semi. I tell you, third gear on the TKO is it's it's a pretty good cruising gear. I could stay in third for a while. You know, yeah, I have a big enough engine. And, and uh, whatever your rear end gear is, make sure you have a you know what rear, what rear are you talking about? Three seventy threes. That's beautiful. Yes. And uh, third is a nice cruising gear. You get a lot of head out of that. Um, you know, a lot of lot of latitude, a lot of RPM range. Uh, it's a nice stout gear in that transmission. You know. I had the you got the, the TKO uh, six hundred or five six hundred six hundred. That's what I had in my blue Chevelle, and I'm sorry, my blue uh, ADZ twenty eight, and I had bought a twelve bolt that had a four thirty three in there. Oh and yeah, I, and I was just like, ah, it's got a five speed. Man, I couldn't wait to change those gears. Man. Really, <laughs> I couldn't wait to change. First gear was non existing, useless. It wasn't, even a <laughs> gear. it wasn't even a racing gear. It was like you could start off in third, and <laughs> right. But no, I changed the gears to what did I put in that thing. I think I went, I think I went three nineties. But I wish I went three seventy three. Yeah, yeah, you know. See, I was thinking about going lower because of the, you know, like to like a three ninety or a four eleven because the like I said on the highway seventy miles an hour. I'm looking at like two grand or under, mm -hmm. and you know, the motor's not turning fast enough. So yeah, you I, might do better. You know, you say what would you use the three seventy? Yeah, you might do very well with a four eleven. Yeah, because you know tires. I'm using a 29 inch tire too, so I'm not using yeah. a smaller yeah. one. Yeah, they fill out the wells nice, and I'm sticking with those. You got red line? No. No. What size? What kind? Of, what size wheels do you have on that car? 17s. 17s. Okay. So so like two seventy five forty seventeen on the rear, and a two forty five forty seventeen on the front. Oh, okay. It yeah. handles great, except I need new rear tires. I have an M and H Race Masters on the back, and they're they're shot. So there's like one tire. Uh, I just found a thing. Yeah, Nitto. Nitto. Are those yeah. the five by fives? These are Nittos. Which ones are these? They are. Let's see if it says. Uh, yes, five five fives. Thank you very much. You had them on your on <laughs> using those. I, I do. <laughs> what can you tell me about them? Oh, I love them. I love them. I got them on the Chevelle. Um, 
and the car handles great, but I mean, it's a, it's an 18 inch wheel with like, I think tires about this fat, it's a fat tire, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What are they? Two? No, they're 305. I think that's what that car is. big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Ray, yeah. you had me thinking a couple weeks ago if those wheels would fit. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So these bad boys are going to get engraved. Mm -hmm. Nice. Quick. Are those appliance, appliance wheels? I don't know. It, I can't find any markings on them. Oh, okay. Look, uh, so, look in the rim band. They yeah. sometimes mark it in on the inside, like where the you know where the tire would cover. Um, could yeah, be true. Could be appliance. They're fifteens, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna engrave them. Good. That's and they're my first five, five, so they fit your car. Yeah, that's my what first are you project. Them on? Seventy-seven Caddy. Oh, okay. I'm, do I'm doing a low rider. Nice. That's good. Oh, you are. Yeah, a little rider will add a LS Terry and talk me into a LS. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta just get an engine here. <laughs> yeah, if I ever get it. <laughs> oh man. Um, so I'm an artist too, so I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to uh, engrave the whole thing. I'm gonna, anything chrome, I'm touching it. You know what I mean? So yeah, hey, that's, that's cool. Now, let me see the then I also do leather. I, I have a leather company where I make leather products, belts, uh, purses, wallets, all that stuff. So I'm going to do the interior as well. All custom oh, interior. Oh, really nice. Yeah. What's your leather company called? Uh, Lee Custom Leather. Nice. You can go to itwaslee.com. It was Lee. Yeah. So somebody says, nice. where'd you get that? It was Lee. It was Lee. It was Lee. <laughs> yep. Yep, so um, I'm going to do the interior. Uh, I'm, I'm putting a 2002 Grand Prix interior in it. The dashboard, I'm going to do a dash swap. Um, everything in it is going to be, you know, modern. And I'm going to do the leather. Yep. What year? 77. A 77? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm going to go with air ride because uh, hydraulics are just too messy and noisy. And, you know, so I'm going to go yeah. air. Yep. Very cool. That's my 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 winter project. Yeah, so you automatically isolate yourself from half the low rider population. You know, it's like mm -hmm. yeah. at you now. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of the old school guys are going air now because their back hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> they had to switch up. <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand some of those guys they have that it's like it's a car. I guess they don't drive it. I don't know. It just jumps up and down and flips yeah. over and all. Hopper, yeah. I mean, yeah, hopper, hopper contest. That's right. what it is, hopper contest? I mean, I don't take it yeah. in from the culture, but I mean, like, they drive those cars. I mean, they push those. I mean, it's like a remote, right? I mean, they yeah. have motor in them. Yeah, drive them on three wheels, you know, do all that. Oh, I see yeah. that. Bouncing, doing wheelies. <laughs> well, they got a they got a competition car out right now that's running on air, and they can flip it. They can jump it so high it flips and all kind of stuff. I remember, on air. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw one stand on a rear bumper, and I was like, "Oh my god, look at that! That's you know, it's it's amazing." Consuela gonna be too pretty for me to be standing that's on the bumper. Like, oh, Consuela. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. She, she she's just gonna be a pretty girl, not not a <laughs> not a hopper. <laughs> good, keep it that yeah. way. That's good. I like that. That's nice. Yeah, Consuela. yeah. I like it. I got well, cool. my little rider would be something totally different, man. I I give me like a '77 Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> yeah, very popular car. Yeah, yeah it, it is. is. Very very popular. Popular. Supreme. Those some yeah, nice those V bodies, man, are yeah. very popular. Yeah. I always liked that cutlass. My neighbor had one. They bought it brand new. It was it 78? It was 77. And uh, I lost my mind when I saw that car. It was, it was gray with the burgundy Landau roof and the T roof. And I was yeah. like, and I told him, I said, you know, because he he sold the, he was, I guess he went to Vietnam. He came back and got, you know, he, and he bought a Mach 1 Mustang 69. Mm. Nice. And, yeah. And now here I am. I don't know how old I was, maybe like nine years old or whatever. And uh, I said, "Hey, Mr. Mark, man, you gotta, you gotta hold this car for me, man." And he goes, "No, no, don't worry, I'll get you. You know, don't worry, such and such. You know, you got it. You get 16 years old. We'll work something out. You can have the car and all this, right?" Hold the car from under me, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah. 
So he got that cutlass. I said, all right, now you jerked me the last time, Mr. Mark. You know, you got to look at this one. He said, yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. He sold that cutlass. Yeah. <laughs> sold that I'm, a, I'm a cutlass guy, man. I, I've probably had, man, I probably had seven of them. I had, wow. I had 73, 74. I had a 77, a 70, 79. I had a 82. I had a... Yeah, man, I, I love colors, man. That's, that's my car. Like my it. auntie loves them too. <laughs> yeah, I like those early colonnade body style ones, you know. Those yeah, my first car, no, my second car was a Cutlass, uh, 73 Cutlass. And uh, I love that car, man. An old lady ran into me, man, tore it up. Yeah. Yeah. But then I got a big settlement, and that's when I went stupid. Man, I was buying everything. <laughs> Dude, I had I had five cars in the driveway. My mom and dad was like, "Dude, you got to get some of these cars out of here. We, we got to move cars every time we yeah. go out. <laughs> every time we leave the house, get move." Yeah, the, uh... I had motorcycles, cars, vans. I had all kind of mess. Yeah. Dude, I thought I was a dope dealer. That's cool that your parents allowed that. I mean, I I mean, like I had two cars in my in my house. You got too many cars here, Terry. I'm like. <laughs> yeah. They didn't. They, it didn't last long. They was like, "You got to sell something." Yeah, <laughs> sell something. Yeah. Oh. So I, I have all the keys in a in a hat. I just reach in and see what I'm driving today. <laughs> yeah. I had a I had a eighty Riv. I had a Grand That's Prix cool. eighty two Grand Prix. That was a nice car too. Jeez. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice car too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had was, a Merker. I always liked it, the 72 Grand Prix. That that's my year. The last year of the before they went big. I mean, mm. even the big Grand Prix were nice. The longer like, nose. Before, so, yeah, I like those. But yeah. that, that that 72, that last year, that it was that's my that's my ride. Had the longer nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and so that would this system would fit in the Grand Prix. So if I had one, I could make the Grand Prix a stick. There you go. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, came that way. Yeah. They, they were, they, you can get a few of them with a stick. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or some, yeah. You know, but that would be a nice car to you know what? I wonder how much those are going for now. You know, because everyone everyone messes with the Monte Carlo. That's yeah. They're yeah. coming up. They're coming yeah. up. Everything's coming up because yeah. everything's been bought up and played out. So yeah, now right? we're going going for other stuff, you know what I mean? So everything's getting stupid. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And what was the cutlass? They had a cutlass that was the coupe like that was, was, that was cutlass. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, because I always like, you know, I know that they got the 442 and the cutlass, you know, supreme, whatever, the fastback one, but I never knew the difference because you know, I, I guess it I never trim. It. it was just yeah. trim, trim options, yeah. yeah. Trim option, okay. Because I had that the stainless. What was the brome? Was that a cutlass? Brome, yeah. Brome. That, was a, that was a Cadillac Brome. Yeah. Oh, Cadillac Brome. That's what it is. Well, the Colors had them too, and Grand Prix. I had a, yeah. I had a my Grand Prix was a Brome. Broham. 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 And now yeah. you got the station wagons, they're coming into their own. I mean, you know, like people, and I like seeing when people tweak out like a, a regular Vista wagon, you know, and make, it look, grain. make it look like a 442, you know, that, you know, I like that. I was, you know, you don't have to do much. I was watching an episode of Charlie's Angels the other day, and, you know, a, a, they were at a resort on an island, and they, they were using a, a wagon to ferry people, I guess, from the plane to the hotel, and, and it, into the scene rolls this. Uh, I, I think it was an old wagon, just a brown, you know, brown car, brown interior, but it had like little pin pinstripe white walls on it with a set of Craigers, and that car looked great, it looked fantastic. It's like, yeah, station wagons are hot right now. I'm telling you, everything's hot. Farrah didn't hurt it either. Seeing her in the passenger seat, you know, that didn't hurt the whole thing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. See, Charlie's Angels. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know. I always, I always liked Jacqueline Smith. She was my favorite. Yeah. 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 Farrah Fawcett. Yeah, you got a fair faucet, man. He was the crazy one. I actually like Kate Smith. She's she was one of my favorites. She was the brain. She was the brains, you know. Yeah. Jackson Smith, she was she's like me. She's just like, you know, go get it. Just, you know, don't think yeah, about I, it. I go for the thinking types, you know. I like a thinking woman. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. 
I don't like them dumb. I like them. I like them to be able to think and speak and you know. Let me get my reading glasses. Hold on. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> oh, glad reading glasses. Now we're talking. <laughs> Liberian. Yeah. Right. There we go. So yeah, you got to check out when I went to um, MotorX. Uh, they had me pick a trophy, and I and I did this Holden. It was a Holden station wagon. Oh, cool. And they tricked that thing out. It's it's a it was a company called Judd's, and it, man, they did a good a good job on that thing. If you yeah. like station wagons, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they took the upholstery inside and just redid everything. Like made these crazy like S shape shaped seats and and uh, wow. super nice, super nice car. Those Holdens are really nice out there. Those guys out in Australia, yeah. those guys are nuts out there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. you know Japan. Japan's really coming up too on cars, American yeah. cars. Oh yeah, they're buying them up. Yep. Yeah, they're shipping them all over. You know, yeah. Yeah. Been doing that for my years. friends come up. My my shop in Orange was right across with these Swedish guys. There was like, I don't know, ten or fifteen Swedish guys shared a shop, and they just fly in at different times, and uh, they they lived in there, you know, in the shop, and they would they would ship cars to Sweden just mm -hmm. get a big uh what do you call it a big container, container you know yeah. and just yeah. load three or four cars in there and all motors uh one guy was doing um corvette motors and stuff and just man they just pack it take it back they'd be there two or three times a year yeah. i was just gonna say you read my mind sweden took all of our long bikes all our choppers i mean they, yeah. they took off with that years ago you know yep taking like, it all and that's i was saying they they have that um power big meets over there in Sweden and and it's like twenty thousand American vehicles. Wow! Like mm. everything's American. You can't get in if you don't have an American car. You can't get in, and cool. they get twenty thousand cars. Wow! It's nuts. It's I'm gonna have, show. I'm gonna have to get your list of shows overseas because I'm I'm gonna try to book some people. You know, going over there. Yeah. So, so those I'll, two I'll are the only ones I, I that I did it was the Motor X, which is awesome, and that'd be a good time. And then, um, and then the Power Big Meets. Power Big Meets, so it's kind of like a how do I put it? <laughs> Ghetto. A little, a little bit backwards. Like there's no vendors. Oh. I mean, no. Yeah, they're kind of like purist. You know, you could you can eat a, a hamburger and you can drive your car in and you can drink, and, yeah. and that's it. Because I was and telling me. You should invite vendors over here. You know, you make a million dollars. Nope. <laughs> well, I guess cars. all the American parts are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, oh, and no deodorant. Be... What's that, Louis? Huh? And, and no deodorant. <laughs> no yeah, deodorant? Yeah. A little. A little. My friends. My friends. <laughs> <have been>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it was pretty cool. Definitely yeah, worth going. I don't know if you, anybody, if they book anybody, you know. Yeah. I mean. It was cool though. Sweet, sweet. Get my butt over the sweet. I wonder if they would like you know, what, how they would go, you know, having a panel of guys like us and gals like us who grew up with these cars to tell them what it was like in the day, you know, and mm. and just tell them the stories like, yeah, you used to pay like a hundred, two hundred dollars for those cars, you know, right. and then we junk them after that, you know, or or they went to demolition derbies. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of cars, yeah. That's where the darts went. Yeah. <laughs> and the Polaris. The Polaris the definitely. Derbies. We got a guy here, Joe Glogley, Smoking Joe from uh, he's at well, owns Tire Town, Rockville Center, and he uh, he drove Newports. That was his car. He every every single demo car was a Newport, and he had five or six of them at, at a time stacked up, just waiting for the next one. And you know, yeah. he would modify them, take them back out to the modifieds, and he'd be running them at Freeport Speedway. Nice thing. Wow. All right, all right, Ray. I'm gonna book us all to go over over there and uh, tell them about the American American gig. There we yeah. go. <clears throat> we'll so back in the 1900s. They're mm, either yeah. gonna make, they need to, they're either gonna make statues of us or they're gonna kill us. So, <laughs> yeah. One or the other. We're either coming back kings or we're coming back in a box. <laughs> or or wipe our deodorant off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to bring a couple cases. Give it out. That's, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> 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 
No, I don't no, know no. if they wear deodorant. I'm just guessing. Uh, okay. <laughs> they do. I don't know. Wild well, shirts? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe I'll keep growing my hair long. Yeah, I think a lot of them have long hair, so that's cool. You know, it was very weird though. I'll tell you. Okay, so we're at the show. It's summer. It's really hot, and I'm starting to notice more and more women are just taking off their shirt. Really? And they're all and they're walking around in their bra. Like it's just and. But the thing is, okay. it's not what you think. It's just you know how your your you know your girl has a bra and it's like that tan color just holds them up. You know, mm -hmm. it's a tan bra. It's an everyday bra. It was those. It's just the walking around in their tan, tan everyday. Not even bra. sexy no, ones. Yeah, no sexy <laughs> thing. Just this grandma bra. And you're just looking around. Like, Seriously. That's, that's <laughs> so you don't want to look at it. Yeah. No. It wasn't. It wasn't hot. It was just. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, yeah. okay, there right. you go. You're not. It's too hot out. Well, you know, Europe in general has a whole different sensibility about the body and and stuff. Yeah, you know, they, they, they're, they're less inhibited over there. That's that's okay. Yeah. that's cool. It was all right. It was, I mean, it was just different to look around and be like, "Wow, there's your everyday." You know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think women have been subjugated for too long in that regard. So I'm, I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for speaking. There you go. I agree with you, right? You know, like some you know. we're all we're all Genesis men here. We're all we know. support we support the no bra days. <laughs> right. We reshare it on on YouTube. Right? Or uh, right. Facebook. <laughs> you got no hang ups here, you know? No. <laughs> no. Well, I tell you, you know. <laughs> I guess what really what really sealed the deal for me, I have two daughters. And now as they get older and start to mature and become women, and and you see, like, you know, you want to see them succeed. And you want to see them succeed in 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 everything they do. And you know, I'm giving them talks like, hey, don't take no crap from nobody. They didn't take no shit. You know what? You know what you do and do it and and take over. You know, it's mm -hmm. like you got you gotta write like everybody else, you know. Uh, and that's that's the deal. You gotta just uh, and they appreciate it. I know they do. So yeah, you just gotta brush it off. You know, I I never had issues at Overhaul. You know, it was just fun every day. So Perfect every example. Day. I mean, there you are in that environment yeah. where it's all guys. I mean, you have to prove yourself. I'm sure, or else you know you're not gonna get the yeah. cred. I mean, a, a guy, a new guy on the set would have to prove himself as well. Yeah. But I'm sure a woman even more so. Yeah, it's a little different. And I just ignored it. You know, I mean, you just make jokes. And, and that's the thing is like, uh, you know, I I always tell my my job interview, they had me come down and the producer comes out. You may know him, Bud Bretzman. Mm -hmm. So Bud Bretzman comes out. He's on two cell phones and he, he uh, you know, he's a busy guy. So all the guys are on break, so everybody's outside gathered around, so everybody can hear us. And he comes over making a big deal, you know, and he shakes my hand and and he's shaking my hand. He says, you know, hey, can you be here 24 seven? You want this job? And I said, yeah. And he said, you don't have another job? I said, no. He said, you got you got to go water your plants or feed your dog or something? I said, no. He said, you got some boyfriend you got to go take care of? I said, no. And he's, he's still shaking my hand. He says, he says, all right, don't F anybody. <laughs> right, if all the guys and everybody goes oh like that well i won't let go of his hand he's trying to pull away i said hold on hold on one second and i look around i said yeah that's not going to be a problem and then goes, oh. nice. <laughs> goes, so you just can't yeah. take everything so serious you know he was just joking you know and, yeah. and it and it broke the ice that i told the joke back and was like yeah yeah no i'm not gonna be doing that nice. you know nice. like up in here yeah <laughs> yeah you could i could have got upset and said how dare you and then i could have gone home right you yeah. know? Right, right and instead you know everybody just let their guard down and then we all got along and you know you, you make jokes in the shop it's funny you know the the interview was pretty hilarious everyone was laughing and then i made friends and and went on from there and there was years of fun you know like yeah you just well, can't be all uppity but you know there's this there's jokes and then there's crossing the line and and yeah. you know the difference, you know. I'm sure your mm -hmm. your girls know the difference, mm -hmm. and you know yeah. you can well, en enjoy yourself, but the, you know there's a limit. To that point, with the different shows you've done, have there been any kind of like I, I guess like hazing rituals or whatever, or things guys have done that I mean oh, anything yeah. you can talk about that was funny, and then maybe maybe where you could come anywhere when you came back at them or anything or. 
Yeah, yeah. there was, the, you know, the very first day that I went on Overhaul, you know, they're trying to see if, you know, how you're going to be. So they, uh, the build manager, Craig, he says, they, you, you know, the inner fender wells, we're going to clean them up and keep them. And I said, we are, you know, it's all right. I mean, this is like a 67 GTO or something. And I said, all right. I said, these are pretty rough. I mean, they got tar, just, you know, what an inner fender well piece of plastic yeah. is just, I, okay. And I said, well, uh, what do we got to clean them with? And he says, I just grabbed some of those paper towels and uh, some Windex. What? And I said, <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. So I said, okay, he thinks I'm an idiot. I said, okay, no yeah. problem. So they wouldn't give me any tools to work with. So I took those inner fender wells. I, you know, just kind of like took off and uh, I went outside with them, took off my Converse, found a hose, and I scrubbed the crap out of them with my, with my stupid Converse tennis shoes. And I got oh, wow. them looking so good. I took them around the other corner and I sprayed them down with some black spray paint. I brought them back in. They were like mint. And all I had was what they gave, you know, they wouldn't let me use any of the other tools. They were joking wow. around me, you know. I cleaned those things and brought them back in. They're like, holy smokes. There <laughs> Why you did go. you do that? Yeah, I just did it. Yeah. Something like that Windex. It, it works yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, it didn't work it's trying like to, trying to some clean them. So look, yeah. that stuff, this stuff was bubbling up. I could, it was all I could yeah. do there to wipe it off. Yeah, I don't know if you know in the back. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, do you know yeah. uh, Ben Bright? Oh, yeah. He's my favorite. He's a good friend. Good friend. Yeah, that's our boy, man. He's he's oh, on the Consuela team. Oh, really? Yeah, he's uh, oh, my God. he's one of my advisors for Consuela. <laughs> he's literally the best person that I've met. Well, probably he's the best person I've met in life. He's just such a good, good person, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I get to be friends with him and and uh, Alyssa and and uh, they took me surfing. I went up to their house and hung out and yeah. and we all went surfing and and just uh, he's a hundred percent guy. Like he, he's my yeah. favorite. Yeah. Yeah, he invited me to a party out of out of um, one of his buddies in Vegas, right? So me and my wife were going out to the party and uh, he goes, "You'll see a whole bunch of people standing out." I was like, "Okay, cool." So we go down the street and I see. 3,000 people standing up. I'm like, man, this is a big party. Cool. So me and my wife get out, and uh, we're walking up, and I'm looking. I'm like, something don't seem right. And so then I seen Count Customs on these guys' oh. shirts, and I'm like, man, we're at the wrong party. <laughs> so, so I called Ben. But I was like, Ben, man, you got me at the wrong party. He goes, oh, we're two blocks down. So we walked down. But um, he, he took us to the shop, man, and it was um, a, a, metal, a metal fabricating guy. Yeah, a little small shop. Have you ever been there? I I think so. I'm trying to think of that guy's name. Clean. He does motorcycles and and. Is his Ray? name Clean? I think so. Yeah. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, his his metal work is so sweet and and intricate. Like he had like a like a throttle cable was gears and and you know just I can't even explain it, man. But this dude was no joke. Yeah. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yep, yeah I wonder him. if it's that same guy we we um, did a car at, at SEMA and some guys came out that we were friends of Ben, I'm sure, and, and we're helping with all the metal work. So I bet it's the same guy. I, yeah. think, was, I think that was his name. Matter of fact, um, that uh, Hell Dorado, one of Ben's friends, did the metal work on that car too in the inside. Like that whole center console is all metal. Oh wow! Yep. Yeah, Ben's a good dude, man. Yeah, he's good. Yep. Yeah, we used to, it, you know, Ben and I, we we were the only two that had this. We were the only two who lived far enough away. We had to stay in a hotel all the time during the show, so mm -hmm. we got pretty close, you know, as friends. And and uh, he would like we just get on his motorcycle and go to the beach. So we spent a lot of time together, and he just you just learn about him. He's just a good person, like. Never seen him do anything wrong. I'm sure he yeah. can't say the same about me, but <laughs> but we had a lot of fun, and we'd always be first to get there and the last to leave. You know, for years yeah. it went on like that, where you know it was Learning. like we, everybody else had lives to go back to. Well, Ben, you know, they were up in um, you know I can't think of the name of the city. Where, I mean, the town where he lived up there, but it was like three hours away, and mm. Alyssa's up there, so you know we we didn't have anything else except work, so we just you know, stayed at the shop and worked and you're there with Chip because I know he was yep. there. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. I got to get Ben back on, man. He's been on the show a couple times. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's good dude. Actually, I think I'm going to have, um, like, a lot of the celebrities come on at the same time, and we'll have, like, a reunion, like, have everybody on, just kick it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like the Hollywood yeah. Squares. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna need more yeah. squares. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get us. Squares. I'm gonna get us hooked up with some more squares. We're gonna we're gonna have everybody come on. <laughs> How much do these squares cost? You gotta pay for each one. You know, you know the square. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, it's a lot to put out. Right. Well, it's my bedtime. I'm about to say the same thing. Great minds think alike. Yeah, Me man. Too. Five o'clock comes quick. So yeah. listen, we really enjoyed having you on here, and uh, we appreciate you coming for okay. sure. I'm and gonna miss you guys. I'm no, you're not you. because I'm listen, back. listen, everybody that comes on, I tell them you are family now. So you come on anytime you want. If you have something you want to promote, or if you just want to come hang out with us, just come through. We're not Thank going. You, we, That's we really hear, cool. We're here every week, so we're every easy Thursday. To all yeah, right, yeah. I'll just be popping. You'll see a square pop up, and she's back yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, hey, come hang out with us, please, because you know, <laughs> you know, our community is is built of everybody. We got manufacturers, uh, radio guys, we got mini bike guys. I mean, just everybody comes through here. Yeah. So, and we all learn from each other. You know what I mean? So, please come back and you know, kick some knowledge. Yeah, time flew. This was awesome. Thanks, Ray. Terry, thanks Thank for you, coming. Sure. Now listen, you don't have to get off. Me and Terry are going to jump off, but you can stay on because Ray runs the after show. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. let some other guys from the chat room they jump in. That and they talk about. To you. That would love to talk to you. Yes. Well, yeah. I'll hang for a minute. My bedtime was an hour ago, you guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm an early bird. I get up at five too, but I go to bed at eight thirty. Wow. Yeah. But I like Ray, so and and I want to meet some new people, so I'll hang out okay. for a minute. Oh, okay. We'll let these little babies go to bed. Uh oh, yeah. <laughs> she, see, she's part of the family already. Uh, part of the trash. Yeah. Uh, right hey, now, Lewis, thank you for having me on. No, I'm thank you. Go to sleep, and I'm gonna have me some celery soda. Nice celery soda. That's some good stuff. Dr. Browns. Dr. Browns, green green can. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a New York thing. Oh yeah. All right, celery soda. <laughs> All, right, bro, I'll see you. Easy. Yo, All right, bro. Easy. Y'all ready? Everybody in the chat room, appreciate you. And please share, like, and, and hit that bell on the YouTube so we can get our numbers up. All right. See you guys next week. Okay. See you. Let Bye. me know. Let me know what you think of the video. Yes, I'll watch it right after. <laughs> see you later. Bye. All right. All righty. Boy, that it's was just a great you and me now. It's just you and me. That's right. We're, We're gonna have some more friends in a minute because our buddy Chassie John's gonna come on and probably Matt Man Brian's gonna come in. And uh nice. yeah, we started doing this kind of we call it the after show. We started talking about music because we're all music guys. Oh, and, nice. And you know, and John and I are drummers, and Terry's a drummer, and you know, we started this whole nother alliance. So the after show was kind of like music and and culture and then and we all talk cars still so it's so do you uh, know about my my music history no tell me oh yeah so um i've been in probably 10 different bands over time um yeah. i sing i play the bass and cool. uh, hey hello there's michael Man Brian. hello and that's a guy that i thought just by seeing him i said he's a bass player yeah <laughs> and okay so am i cool uh -oh. You play a long yeah. scale or a short scale? Uh, short scale. I, I'm I'm the guy with uh, two left feet and two right arms. I'm I'm no good at that stuff. <laughs> nice, <laughs> Johnny boy. It's Chassie John from Florida. Johnny, what's up? Yeah. Hi. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Awesome. So what do you play? I play bass. You play. I'm a bass. drummer. You're a drummer. Yeah. I'm a welding drummer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We could start a band right now. Let's go get our instruments. We <laughs> could. We could. It could be kind of scary. Yeah. Well, you have to. Ray says he he doesn't know, but I played in a band. It's called The Rentals. There we go. What kind of music did you play? What the band? Uh, what was the? Uh... So it, we we were an '80s synth pop band. Oh. We, okay. we started in '96. 
So we were at 80s synth cool. pop started in the 90s. So we played the Moogs and, uh, nice. and then I had my own band, uh, Super Sport 2000. And that's where I sang and played bass. Good name. And, uh, cool. Yeah. Great Good name. Stuff. What kind of bass you play? I, a Mustang. Okay. What? A little Mustang, a little mustard colored Mustang. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Because I'm little. I got to have something little, you know? Okay. Yeah. And I and I play it low. You can't. Oh, yeah. I'm not the the bass up here. No. Low. No. Thank God, because bass should be roll low. low. Who That's are your right. favorite? Who are your favorite bass players through time? Like, you know, who do you who do you really like? You know, I'm no one. In fact, people have called baloney on it, but I don't really know what musicians are in what band. Okay. Like you oh, could ask me. You don't have to know. Yeah. Yeah, all my all-time favorite, like Led Zeppelin, Rush, uh, and Geddy Lee. Yeah, and, and, and I don't know. Say, oh, you mean I Led don't know which one Geddy Lee is in? You know, because poor John Paul Jones never got any love. I mean, he was a great bass player, but he never got center stage. You know, when you when you when you got guys like Page and Plant and Bonham next to you, you better be something special. And he was yeah. something. Special. Well, Jones was a great bass player. Oh yeah. And you know, you're talking to two drummers, so the drummer and the bass, you got we gotta carry the bottom end. So you gotta be simpatico with your bass player. Exactly. Uh and uh oh, yeah. I'm I yeah, I'm, I'm a big yeah, fan yeah. Of, I'm a big Thunderfingers fan. I like that was a big John Entwistle fan. I like this stuff. I love the way he used to just stand in one spot. Because you know what? He didn't want to be part of the chicanery and the foolery that the band was doing. So he would yep. stand there and, and he's playing that real long scale and he's sliding up and down. I mean, he was really working that thing. And uh, another guy that, you know, in his own right got a lot of uh, cred, but not when you not when you got guys that are next to you like, uh, you know, like he had. Yeah, but, that's true. Uh, yeah, funny stuff. Funny. So yeah, we always say cars and guitars. You know, the two go together. You know, it's like cars and music are like. That's so right. Not, you know. Cars, guitars, and bars. Yeah, that too. Yeah. It sounds too. like a line from Blondie. Oh yeah, there you go. Hey, hey, yeah, it is actually. That's true. Remember that horrible rap song she did? I, know I, I don't think I that was a, right actually. Now. That was really the first rock rap song, and I don't think it was that bad. I always, I always liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, you know? I had to memorize it straight right, away. Right from the get-go. Get out of here. You actually did that song? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm the best. Eating bars, now he eats guitars. Now, right. now he only eats guitars. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> well, that was a cool band. I like Blondie. Yeah, you know? Blondie's good. Yeah, they yeah, are uh, great. Very well, very high regarded in the punk scene in New York. I mean, they oh, yeah. were CBGBs, brother. And the Continental, and they were playing, you know, all the dives. Ramones. Yeah. They were, they were playing. The Ramones. I was just listening to the Ramones the other day. Somebody yeah, put Ramones. something in my dream. Did, have, you, have you realized that, like, every Ramones song is actually the same? Yeah. yeah. The music, yeah. It's, it's the same I, notes and the same riff. I bought well, the they the their their minds, you know, they I have like the, the best of the Ramones. Best of the Ramones CD is like 20 songs. And by the time you get to like eight or ten, you realize like, okay, nothing's changed but some of the words. It's right. like well, what is it? Exactly. They're great. It's like if you listen to a Dick Dale CD, you know, <laughs> King of yeah. Earth, King of Earth. Same yeah, thing. Yeah. After song six or seven, boom, they're all the same. Yeah, I had I had dinner with Joey Ramone back in uh, like '81. That's pretty cool. A really good friend of mine. Um, his dad owned a big Italian restaurant downtown Manhattan, and Joey Ramone would come in there all the time and eat. And uh, I happened to be there one night with my friend. We he's like, let's go to my father's restaurant and go eat, and. Joey walked in, and we invited him over to our table, and there he was in the leather, eating wow. spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. It was so cool. Hey, New York guy. Some, uh, That's so out some, of context, like Joey. Yeah, yeah. Meatballs. I had some thirty-five yeah. millimeter photos of that, but I don't know where they went over the years. Wow. But yeah, there I was with Joey Ramone and my buddy eating spaghetti and meatballs. 
<laughs> That's it's cool. cool. Hey, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Hey, you guys, I'm, I'm going to bug out. I just got a right. signal from my better half that uh, I'm in trouble for keeping him up. Oh, boy. All right. Got to do what you got to do. He wants to come through to go to the kitchen to, to get a little uh, Captain and Coke. So there you I go. can't stop him. Well, hey, it was awesome, awesome having you on the show tonight. We get, you got to come back. All the time. You know, we get walkthroughs all the time. Lou, Lou Santiago used to have people walking past him all the time in the back. It was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Is someone wear a mask or have something weird on? It was like, <laughs> it was, I've done a couple of Zoom meetings, and the one there was a Zoom meeting. The lady, her husband's down the hallway back there in his underwear, and she oh. don't know it, so she's continuing, you know, this you know, uh, kind of business meeting. And here's her husband in his skivvies, and he's just tooling around. I'm just laughing. Like, really? You don't even know he's back there? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Socks and socks and the skivvies. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's funny. <laughs> All right. Yeah, All right. Well, thanks, uh, yeah, thanks for coming on. Come on back anytime. We uh I will. Yeah. This is a good time. I, I you know what I'm gonna have to do on night when I don't have to get up on oh you wait, do you always do it on Thursdays? Yeah. This is okay. on Thursdays, yeah. Yeah. So I'll do it on a Thursday when I don't have to get up on a Friday and, and come yeah. hang out with you guys because the after show is where it's at, so I hear you know. But the after show is yeah. awesome. We yeah. get into yeah. all kinds of craziness. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> it's pretty nuts. Now yeah, I'll yeah. just turn up for this, right? Yeah. All right. That. After hours. Just come any That's Thursday right. and just hang out and watch what's going on. I mean, it's it's awesome. Right, right. You wouldn't believe the people that pop in and out of here. Oh, yeah. A lot, a lot of really well-known people come in and out of here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You never right, know I'm who to show up. Yeah. It's Very a good cool. deal. Yeah. A lot of fun. Cool. Yeah. Well, I had a great time tonight. I, the Lewis was great, Terry, and thank yeah. you, Ray. Good to meet you guys. Yeah, thanks. Good thanks a lot. You, you got to go on Ray's. You got to go on Ray's radio show. Yeah, I'll, I'll be in touch. I'll send okay, you. Okay. Yes. Email. I'm a few weeks back right now. I'm trying to. I'm shuffling some guests. I'm, I actually got the guy coming on who wrote this book. Get really? out of here! Really? Yeah, it's. I, I just got a copy, so I'm. Re I actually, I actually read the books that I. When I have an author on, I don't want to know what's what's going on, and and it's it's if you see it's 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 about the cars and the people behind the move behind Steve McQueen. It's not about the movie itself. It's about the stuff that went on behind the scenes. Yeah. So it's kind of a new slant on that old topic, which is and Matt Stone is he's been an automotive journalist for years, so he knows how to write. Yeah. So you know Chad McQueen, yeah, uh, his son he oh, yeah. he did redid the bullet car. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. the gas monkey guys. And He's I all over. The, book. Chad I is the in gauges all for that. What'd you say? I did, I rebuilt the gauges for that car. Oh, for get the, out of here! For, the, for Chad's car, yeah. So wow. did, did you did you meet my buddy Russell? Russell. Russell Holmes. I think that was before that was before Russell came in, John. No, yeah. no, he was on, he was there. What, no, see, what? I got well, when I did the gauges. The car was down at um, must uh, classic Mustang. Oh, okay. Uh, down in Missouri. Yeah, my my buddy Russell got hired in to do the co-star on on the show that that they were doing called uh, Garage Rehab. Okay, yeah. Where they would go in and redo people's shops and stuff. Yeah. And then in between seasons, that deal with the bullet car came up. So Russell was on Fast and Loud, and then he was with them. When they went at, went back out to San Francisco to film that scene. Oh wow, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, my, cool. see, I didn't get any of the the fun part and the glory. They did. I just went down and just, I just happened to be in the shop when it was there. They gave me the gauges been. and I yeah. took them back to my shop and then sent them so you, back. I was like, oh. So when you rebuild the gate, you actually get in there with that tiny little paintbrush and freshen up the numbers and everything. Yeah, and, I mean. You do it with stencils, you know. You just yeah. You do it with stencils, but you do paint it yeah. and and little looking, details. That's an art stuff work. like that. That's all yeah. like that's the original condition. It's all you know, weathered yeah. and all. So yeah, this this was the this is the original car. So that was in as well. This is now in as found condition. Yeah, Brian, I'm thinking of you every time I'm reading this. It's just Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. Brian's a Mustang guy. 
Nice. Yeah. Got one. Hey, see, so you, need, you need my uh, hydraulic clutch pedal system. Yeah. Yeah, you need one of these guys. I, I just saved your website. You have oh, that for, for second gen 70 to 81 Camaro Firebird? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. All right. That's good. Brian, just got to a couple more ratchets. That's all. That'll work out good because I'm <laughs> rebuilding a second gen car and it's going to have a Lenko transmission in it. Oh, cool. And, uh, instead of doing that linkage like that, I may wind up going back to stock pedals. Sweet. But we'll see. I'm not yeah. sure yet on how I'm building it. I may be building a full tube chassis. I may not. So well, if you do, let me know. Let me yeah. Well, if I do, if if I do the full tube chassis, I'll have to use different pedals because the seat will be way, way, way back, and oh, okay, uh, yeah, there won't be anything under the dashboard that's stock. But um, yeah, that's that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I saved up that website, so I'll go up on there and and, and uh, mosey around. All right, yeah. Say hi on Facebook. I'm on there, Sherilyn Westrich. Okay. Yeah, Facebook. yeah. I'll go. I'll go like the page. That'll be cool too. All right, guys. Awesome. Right. Great. Okay, I'm out. Okay, Sherilyn. Right, Good night. Okay. All right. Good night. Thank Take you, care. Ray. Thanks okay. for having me, You're you guys. Welcome. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Okay. See you. Ah, oh, yes, sir, guys. She's nice. Oh. That was fun. That was very good. Yeah. Refreshing. Yeah, talking to someone who's been, you know, in so many different venues and so many different shows, uh, yeah. you know, building 75 cars and all that's that's a lot of cars. That's a lot of a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's I guess it's it's like anything else. It's like when I work at the shop, you know, I don't I almost don't consider what I've done because it's like you do something on a car and it's out the door. You know, you're not building the whole car, you're just in my case, just repairing it, but so, yeah, you still get to do it, but it all just becomes a blur after a while. It's just a matter of in and out, in and out, you know, yeah. through you today, you know. But So, um, the Camaro. Yeah. They got beat up by Holly for another $235. Oh, that's, that's not terrible. Tell no. why, why, why so? Uh, I'm, I'm aggravated with Holly. First of all, um, you know, you call them up and they said, you know, due to just COVID and all this other crap. That, yeah, everybody's saying you know, that. They're really busy. So they've added more tech guys. Okay. And now they're open during the week up until 10 o'clock at night. For oh, tech. good. You know? So I called during the day. Um, God forbid you hit number one for holly fuel injection yeah and you get the recording comes straight out we're really overwhelmed please call back later wow <laughs> so i called four different times got that same message finally at eight o'clock i got put in the queue yeah so i'm doing paperwork and i'm on facebook and and eating dessert and the whole deal an hour and 40 minutes before somebody picked up Wow. Yeah. But I'm like, whatever. So I tell the guy, I had all the part numbers written out. This is the EFI. This is the ignition. This is the distributor after the second one that they said I should use. This is the dashboard that I got. I've got all the plug and play stuff hooked up. I said, I need to hook up an oil pressure sender. And a zero to 90 ohm fuel level sender. I said, and from what I'm reading, I can put the oil pressure through the EFI. So the guy says, yeah, you could, you could do that. You know, you can pin that out and hook up the wires and get it to run through the EFI. And then it'll, you know, you can find that channel on the dashboard. I said, all right, what about that one Zero to 90 ohm brown wire for the gas gauge. He goes, well, if you would have bought this cable kit, he said, everything is right there. I, you know, we knew it had to be somewhere, John. Right? <laughs> it wasn't where you were. So anyway, um, the guy says... This is what you need. There it is. There's your A to D converter. 
this is a this is a uh, you plug this in. It's a it's a 10, 10 channel IO adapter. Uh huh. And they give you a really slick memory stick for uh -huh. all your upgrades. So I'm like, all right, that's pretty cool. So this, you open up the back of the dashboard, you plug this copy in, and now you got 10 I.O. channels. And when you go through the instructions, this channel here is already pre-pinned and plugged for the oil pressure sender there you that go. I bought. Don't need this pigtail. Right. This one just plugs right in. Done deal. Okay. So there you go. All I got to do is run this wire through the firewall, put this thing in the motor. I got it. That's done. Then here's the here's the part that really tweaks me. Okay. So you've got all these other things. In other words, there's one here for water temperature. That's already part of the EFI. So it's unneeded. This one here is a uh, there's another auxiliary that can go to your CAN bus and, and do some other stuff here. So you got this thing here, it's all ready to go. And they give you a whole bunch of wires pre-terminated with the pins, okay? Of all of this cabling, I need this one TAN yeah, wire. I was gonna say, you need a, 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 not even a tenth well, of a percent, a tenth, right. tenth of it. All I need is this one TAN one. There you go. And plug in to this at position 13. Jesus Christ. What a Done. Way. So the guy says, well, why did you buy just the digital dash? I said, here's the part number. He goes, yeah. He goes, that's the digital dash with, with the two USBs and the CAN connector and the power cord. I said, yes, exactly. I said, when I told one of your tech guys six months ago at Holly that we wanted to go digital dash, the guy said, what EFI are you using? What ignition are you using? But this is the part number you want. If I would have bought what they call the standalone unit, which was another like $260, I would have got the same digital dash and this whole wiring harness all would have come in one box. Right. And it would have just been seriously a lot easier to plug and play this whole thing and just run that one wire. And I wouldn't be crying like a little bitch. Well, we, yeah, we, how, we had a feeling. How, how I'm having problems with the technology and with Holly. I know. And, you know, know we, we, were, we were through the weeks of going through this. We were kind of thinking already that you were missing something. They didn't yeah. give you something. And, that, and that's, that's what it was. So, I mean, now it's simple. And, you know, I went on the Facebook Holly EFI page, and I asked a couple of questions, and all I got was likes and no answers. Right, right. And I'm like, you're idiots. I you know? guess and they when are you overwhelmed. Go, when you go on the Holly website, there's links to, like, YouTube and, and other stuff. They There's another whole message board that holly runs and when you go on it as a newbie yeah. you're uh very overwhelmed right but you do a search like on any message board you know and i went to look for how do i hook up the gas gauge to this dashboard yeah so there's like link after link after link and it brings up like instruction books and after like 10 sets of links i finally see the io connector and I'm like, yeah, that's what I need. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I go on I go on my summit deal and there's three different versions of this plug. And I wrote them down and that's when I asked the tech guy, I'm like, which one which one's gonna make my life the easiest? And he goes, yeah. You want that one there. He said, So you don't have to create the pin, you know, crimp it and the whole deal. He's like, No, just get that. So I had to call Rocco. I'm like, dude, I had to spend a bunch of your money on stuff you're never going to use. <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? I go, you need this I.O. connector. He's like, okay. I said, and you need one wire out of it. What? <laughs> he 
Yeah. yeah. But without that, well, tell them, you know, the, the option is you could not do that and you don't have a gas gauge. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what the problem is? Is uh, the EFI does a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, what we're hooking up is not even scratching the surface after I really seriously read the whole 72 page owner's manual on this EFI. You can control so much stuff. And then the fact that we're using that distributor, that the sniper distributor, we're allowing the EFI to actually set the timing, the curve, you know, how quickly the advance comes in, what's the max, what is this thing going to crank at, how many degrees for start, how many degrees for idle. You know, all of that stuff is all literally controlled with that stylus on, on that little board or on the dashboard. Yeah. And then you've got all of these relay switches that you can create. And then the dashboard does a lot of that stuff again. So uh -huh. it's like redundant. So you could literally have like, uh, what do you call it? Like touch buttons that activate relay switches. You, know, you just hit it with your finger. Yeah. Uh, various screens. So uh, this thing, uh, it's capable of doing so much stuff. It's completely overwhelming. And we're just using it as a digital dashboard to show gauges. Right. Uh, well, uh, I'm finding out, and I wish I would have read this sooner. There's turn signals already built into this thing. Oh, There's wow. a high beam indicator already built into it. Nice. There's a lot of stuff in that dashboard that we're not using any of it, you know? Yeah. So, but at least That's it's going to get – I'm going to get it done. Like, if I don't get it done this weekend, it's going to be done next weekend. Yeah. And then <laughs> – you're going to laugh. I'm building another car. Besides my black car. Oh. I found a deal on a Firebird with a big block and a Turbo 400 in it. It's got a narrowed rear, but it's a ladder bar car. Yeah. And the price is ridiculous. And my, my buddy Evan sent me photos. And he's like, dude, you should get this car. And I'm like, I already have one that's sitting for years and I haven't done anything with it yet. He goes, I don't know. Well, it's here if you want it. So I show my wife the photos and I tell her about it. She comes out in the garage like 10 minutes later. We should go buy that car. And I'm like, why? She goes, because then you can build your white 70. She said, so you'll be the only kid on the block that has both of his childhood toys. <laughs> your, your black 81 and your white 70. That would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. And the cool part is, because she says, well, how much is it going to cost? She says, can you do it like a cheap build? I said, well, you got to understand something. When it was the 1970, it was way less car than the 81. I said, so... There's a lot of stuff that's going to come off this 81 that I was going to put up for sale. Well, now I'm not. Um, the upper and lower tubular control arms from the 81 will go right on the other car. Because okay. I'm getting rid of that modified front frame. Yeah, yeah. My narrowed 9-inch rear, axles, brakes, the whole deal. Well, that'll go in the other one. All I got to do is cut out the back half of the car and change the frame rails to a four link rail. Now I got, I have everything. All I got to do is buy the rails and the front four link brackets. I already have the rear end. I already have the four link bars. I have all of that stuff. I have the wheels and tires. Man. This one's got the turbo 400 transmission in it and it's got a mild uh, 454 oval port engine in it. Um, single four barrel running. I don't have to do anything. She okay. says, oh, so you can build the car will look exactly like the one you had, but it'll just be a 
a mild, like, driving motor? I said, yeah, absolutely. She goes, perfect. She goes, and it's an automatic, right? She goes, you're not going to put the four-speed back in. I go, no, no, I'm leaving it as an automatic. She goes, so I could drive it. And I'm like, yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wind up with two projects. Boy, talk about going from a fire, fryer pan right into the fire. I know. But, you know, when I, when I start to weigh out all of this stuff, I can get the 70 done literally in a couple of months. As I pull parts out of the 81, put them into the 70, send it off to paint. Done. So much for having one car in the big garage. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the other problem is, is after I get it done, I got a lot of stuff in here. It's going to be difficult to park two big firebirds in this garage. Yeah. Because I got work tables and tools and machinery and stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, may have to, I may have to invest on those, uh, you know, those wheel jacks that you slide under and pump up with your foot. That's oh, yeah. I've, I've been buying them. Yeah. Go jacks. Yeah. Go yeah. Jacks. I may have to invest on a set of the good ones. Yeah, you know, spend four hundred and fifty dollars or so. I've been buying mine at Harbor Freight. They got a line of them at Harbor Freight. Yeah, they they've been hold, Do they hold up? The, uh, you know, I haven't used them yet. I got them for when I need to move this car. Um, and you know, I'm not going to be using them every day. And like in the shop, they use them all the time. I'm not going to be using them with that frequency. So, well, yeah, they're, they're right now I've got the Trans Am sitting on four. Um, small furniture dollies yeah that i bought at northern tool yeah uh -huh. 7.99 on sale mm -hmm. and i i bought four of them and i'm like you know what if the weight of the car cracks it seven bucks yeah you know? so i bought four of them and i jacked the car up and i put the car on them and literally you can just push the car left right forward backward and you could let it sit for months and then you got to move it and it just rolls. The yeah. wheels are not flattening out or anything, you know. It's just the fact that you got to jack it up to do it. Yeah. But I'm thinking for me to conveniently, comfortably park these two cars in here, I, I, I need to pull, pull one in and jack them and then shove it over and then pull the other one in. Yeah. Yeah. I put a plate under mine. I took a piece of uh, uh, plywood, you know. Three quarter uh -huh. inch plywood. Yeah, and I screwed it on the bottom of the of the dolly the main rails. Of the rails, right? Yeah. Just to re strength, and that's what I got the mu the Mustang's been sitting on like that for yeah, I in twenty years. <laughs> so yeah, I, I bought. If I got to move the Firebird, I just I just lean on it and push it with my butt. It just moves. Yeah, you know, I needed some room two weeks ago. Um, the way I got the car, the Camaro sitting here, you can open up the driver's door all the way. Cause I, you know, I was constantly messing around with the fuse panel. And if you can't open the door all the way, you can't get in there to unscrew those two screws that yeah. hold the fuse box on the firewall and mess yeah. with it. So I had to kind of scooch my workbench over a couple of inches and, and now the door opens. But on the other side, the door was opening up. A little over halfway and then it was banging into the to the trans amp yeah so i took the the door off the firebird <laughs> that's that's good. Good. it's got the fiberglass door oh uh, nice so i just lifted the door up and i stuck the door i don't think you can see it yeah it's beautiful back. perfect see the blue yeah 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 mm. that's the door uh, right so i stuck it on the back by the back window and that allowed me to open it up a little more, but then I was banging off the, the, the roll cage, the door bar. Yeah. So I just leaned on the Firebird and scooched the Firebird to the other side by about four inches. Yeah. And now both doors open fully. Nice. So I can, you know, do all this wiring stuff, finish this wiring stuff. But we'll see what happens. The other thing is my landlord, uh, where the aquarium shop is, came by the other day and said, the guy on the end, I got a guy that, that has the two end units, and um, he buys and sells and refurbishes um, natural gas meters uh -huh. for, like, municipalities all around Florida. So he's got a shop around the corner from our shop, and he's got these, these 
meters. Some of these things are huge. They're like the size of a freaking Vega. These giant natural gas meters, you know, and propane meters. Um, and then he needed more storage space. So he rents two units where I am with the aquarium business. So now the guy's looking for a commercial building so he can consolidate, put everything in one place. So my landlord said uh, in a couple of months, the, the first two units are probably going to open up. He said, if you want to expand and do, you know, your car stuff on one side and your aquarium business on the other, he goes, you could you could do that. So I'm like, all right, let me know what's going on you now. Because that, that was about to be the ultimate for me because then I would have, I'd have about 1,300 square feet devoted to the, my tools and the two cars. And I keep them there. And that's all gated and fenced. And then when I wind up buying a trailer to, to take the race car to the track or go to a show or something, I can store the trailer there too. Yeah. You know, because that's where I keep my boat. So the cool thing is, is if, if I take over that end unit, there's a big alleyway on one side. And like I said, the whole place is fenced in, chain, big chain link fence, barbed wire and everything. In the wintertime, when the boat's not at the marina, I could literally back the whole boat and trailer down that alley. And then the car trailer can back in in front of that. And then I still have the two big garage doors. And it's got, you know, tall ceilings, so I can actually buy a lift, which is kind of something important that I would love to have. And I've never had a place other than that farm place I was at. Yeah. And I wasn't there long enough to buy a lift. You know, because it's nice to have one of those drive-on deals. Yeah. You can put one car upstairs and one car downstairs, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Just if you buy one of those, make sure you buy the bridge jacks so you can raise the car off the ramps. Yeah. Otherwise, well, one the, here's one of the problems, though. I would probably have to modify because the, the bridge... That they the bridge stuff that they sell that runs in that set of rails, mm -hmm. it positions the ramps for a standard, basically a standard car from a compact to a large car or a truck. But when yeah. you got a narrow rear, your slicks are hanging off. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. When we had the one that same kind of drive on deal at the chassis shop. You know, we loosened up those bolts and slid the ramps closer together so we could put race cars up there. And yeah. most race cars, you got 20 inches to, to yeah. 24 inches from, you know, sidewall to sidewall, depending on, on the car. Mm. And that way, the slicks were literally, you know, on the whole deal. So when you buy those centerpieces that are like on rollers that you can move, like to do an oil change or to jack up the car. They're kind of made to fit a stock width car. Mm. So I would yeah. have to maybe cut a section of those things out and weld them together. You know, I mean, are the, the jacks are up on the outsides, right? Uh, or is yeah. it center kind of a thing? I, the, 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 the lift I worked on that had them was a hunter lift, and it, mm. and it had pads, to just, and you could move them in and out. And then just pull the lever and brrr, they would raise up, but they would they would move in and out that way. But that yeah. was a good one. The Hunter was a good lift. Yeah, yeah. it was an alignment rack. I, so, I, I had a shop that had a drive on, and he did a whole bunch of race car stuff. And yeah. he, with the with the factory with the Hunter alignment machine lift type thing, he had no problems with yeah. the narrowed rear ends. So yeah. I don't think he'd have a problem. You probably got to go to a, one of the better lifts, one of the better quality, yeah, more yeah. expensive lifts to get that feature. But yeah, yeah all right. either way, Brian, what are those silver stars behind you? Huh? What are those silver oh. stars behind you? Uh, these, uh, these two here uh, were my dad's uh, badges. Oh, very nice. This, oh, wow. This was his first badge in '66. Wow. And this one here was um, like uh, 74 to, 
I want to say early 80s. That is cool. But uh, he was in the United States Secret Service. And yeah. um, he, uh, uh, my brother's got one of them. And I gave the other ones to the girls. Yeah, yeah. This is the one I mostly remember uh, growing up or whatever. I yeah. can't believe how big this one is. That's like yeah. a, that's like yeah. a Wild West sheriff right there. <laughs> right. right? Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, listen, that's uh, my condolences. That's always hard to go through. You know, it's tough going through that. That's... Thanks. Yeah, it was uh, – I mean, it was a long time coming. I mean, he's – you know, he battled – uh, for the last six years, you know, he was really, uh, you know, he had, he had good months and bad months yeah. and he was, you know, he, he hated six years ago when he got up and he couldn't breathe. Uh, he hated it ever since. So, yeah. you know, it's just too bad that he had to go through all that. So, yeah, stinks. Yeah. But, uh. The only, the only two I can't find, I can't find his uh, Interpol badge or his retirement badge. Oh. So I we're still cleaning out. We uh, still cleaning up and looking all, trying to find all his little stuff and his knickknacks. <laughs> you know, we were but, doing some shows early on at the Cradle of Aviation over here in Garden City, and um, they have their own private security. And the one guy. A young, younger guy, one young guy did, and they had an older guy who walked around. He was about six two, six one, six two. Must have weighed about one hundred and sixty pounds, nice and thin, and he wore like a Texas, like a Texan shirt with the lapels, with the with the little epaulets on the lapels, a bolo tie, he had like Hager slacks that were like double knit cowboy boots, and mm. a you know, and a jacket, a sport coat. And the guy, he was a, he was kind of cool. Like he wouldn't give you the time of day. And then me and my my co-host Chris, we finally cornered him one night because we were there late, and we had seen him every day, so he knew that who we were and who we were associated with, and we weren't just like regular riffraff. We were special <laughs> riffraff. So <laughs> yeah, we were riffraff with a pass, you know. So <laughs> we started talking to him one night, and he finally opened up a little, and he had a real snarky, snide. Since he and he chain smoked it all, and and I was like, Who is this guy? And he says, Well, you know, he goes, Yeah, he relocated out here, he has a daughter out here. He says, But you know, I'm not from here. I'm like, No shit, Sherlock. You know, you're like you're right out of the freaking wild west. So he says, Yeah, I've been in law enforcement all my life. And he pulled the jacket back on one side, and he's got a, a nickel plated 44 revolver. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. He goes, this was this was the gun I carried on the job. And he pulls back his uh, the other side of his jacket, and he had a silver, a huge silver star. Yeah. He said, yeah I'm a Texas Ranger. And wow. I'm like, I'm like can I see that bit? <laughs> I never saw a silver star. And I tell you something, I've seen a lot of different badges. I got a lot of friends in law enforcement. But that one made me stand back and say, holy shit. That mm. was so cool. That's why they caught my eye, because I knew that wasn't – that was that wasn't out of a cracking jackbox. Yeah. Well, that, like I said, that big one, the that big one is just like that. It's it's just so like out there, you know. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, cool. Yeah. No. Uh, but hopefully, like I like to find it. I don't know what happened to his retirement badge. Cause he had it for the long. I mean, I know that he carried it, and then one day, my mom. Do we have a safety deposit box? Huh? Uh, no, no. I don't. Like I said, uh, he got. You know, back when uh, the agent, uh, Secret Service agents, got. Uh, they were all with on like a Obama. Pla uh, they. I don't know where they were. They were overseas with Obama, and they got in trouble. Yeah, was that? When, he, when he was huh? uh, on. The when he was on the I'm going to kiss everybody's ass tour. Yeah. yeah. Every tour and, yeah. and my dad was so mad because that wasn't, you know, that wasn't his upbringing or, you know, that's not the way the service should have been, you know? Right. right, right. And, uh, Oh, is that so, when the service but, got caught for like hookers and all kinds yeah. of, yeah. 
Yeah, and okay. yeah they had uh, they had a whole bunch of stuff, and and um, it was uh, like I said, one day my mom went got his wallet and realized his retirement badge was gone, and he never said anything. So, wow. you know, he was, uh, you know, my my uh, my dad was, you know. Uh, hate to say it, but straight as an arrow and by the book, you know, so, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I like to know what happened to it. So but, I bet it will show up. Yeah. Hope he was in a poker match somewhere. <laughs> well, or yeah. He had to give it to the I'm... tool dealer because he was short on cash. Listen, dude, I'll give you this badge and I need that, like, I need that impact gun. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I hope he did it in a junk drawer somewhere. But yeah. it's also funny because I we couldn't find his Interpol one. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, and I, I remember seeing it. I just, like I said, well, let me ask you this. I mean, we only get to see the small piece of your world behind you. What are the chances of your kids finding anything that you own? Oh, <laughs> like anything. <laughs> like, they couldn't find that gauge behind you because it's going to be like, I don't know. Yeah, well, it, it's, a, it's actually, it is really funny because, um, uh, you know, and, and cleaning out stuff and going through. It was so funny because, like, I found his uh, army fatigues, you know, stuff like you never knew he had or he never talked about, you know. Right. So you're right. I mean, unless the stuff that he taught, you know, like, other than the stuff that he wanted us to know, I guess, because, you know, he, he wrote it all down or to kept telling us a million times, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there's only, uh, like, I just, like um, – Last night, I, I, I finally got his uh, his service weapon. You know, his three fifty seven and his his uh, uh, his uh, second gun. You know, the one that nobody knows about and right. um, the thirty eight. And uh, the only thing that I'm missing though, I can't find is his. He had a Browning automatic, and yeah. I don't know what happened to it, or I don't know where he hit it. So. Did you did you find the Did you find the twenty two with the numbers filed off in case you need to plant it? <laughs> well, yeah. uh, well, we won't talk about that. But uh, you know, every good cops got one of those. <laughs> yeah, because it's you know the way the the way the judicial system is. You get these scales that are in and out of the system ten times, and you know the guy's just fucking dirty as hell. So you plant <laughs> it. That way he's gone forever. That's it. So. But yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Like I said, uh, and like I said, my my dad wasn't super flashy about stuff, but it was interesting. You know, came across a lot of his, you know, the lot of a lot of the the dignitaries and foreign guys that he uh, bodyguard. You know, letters and stuff that they wrote about onto him and so forth. It was, you know, yeah. like I said. So he was in the service from what? From the sixties on up? Uh, it was from sixty six to uh, eighty six. Okay. Yeah. He saw a lot of action. Yeah, and then from that, he uh, he actually he was like uh, last of the. Uh, he was able to retire early because he had five years in the military, so he had the service time, and then he went back into the. Uh, printing and bureau engraving, and he was a special agent for them, and where they print the money, and you know had. I took uh, that tour when we went to Washington years and years and years ago. That's a yeah. that's an amazing building. Yeah. yeah, see those printing presses and that money flying by. Yeah, we we yeah. did the tour in Dude, Philadelphia. Geez. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We did the Philadelphia tour. Yeah. Yeah. So he was from like the Johnson era right up to the Reagan era. Yeah. He, uh, we, uh, when I was a little guy, uh, we you lived right off. Guy. Come on. Yeah. Come on. But we lived off, uh, well, we lived up when we, uh, he was on the Eisenhower detail. Okay. So we were outside of the Eisenhower. We, we lived in, uh, when we lived in Gettysburg and he was with Mamie Eisenhower for five years or whatever, four years, That's five cool. years. 
Yeah, yeah. And then uh, he was on Reagan's both Reagan's campaign, Ford's, um, uh, part of Nixon. Carter. He was he had the uh, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So Carter, yeah, Nixon. Right. So he was there and uh then he then when his mom got sick uh, instead of traveling or whatever, he had gone into Interpol, and that way he we, we could stay here because we actually we we were up ready for transfer because we moved like every five years. Wow. Yeah. So, so his mom had gotten sick, and we were basically he moved into Interpol for a couple years and finished out to get retired, and then went into the Bureau of Printing and Engraving. Yeah, so, but he did that so, until. So they bring in a they bring in a special detail. What are they, like at a funeral? What's their procedure? What do they do with? Uh, they bring in like an honor guard or. or what? Uh, unfortunately, because of all the BS, we're not having anything. So okay, okay. He uh, and plus he really didn't want anything. So I mean, like I said, my dad was was um, it was about everybody else. He'd give his shirt off. He'd give his shirt or help anybody. Um, so, like I said, well, he was. Listen, that's a man who practices true service. He's not yeah. selfish sure. like like we are. I am. You know, it's like <laughs> that's that's so, a true service. Yeah, that's yeah. Someone to be emulated. That's the real American hero right there. You know? Hell yeah. yeah. There you go. That's a patriot. That's a hero. Not the shit that they throw up now. That's. Oh, I think we started. Oh yeah, I know. Well, like I said, it's like John. <laughs> Wound up here. So, mm. but uh, yeah, no, I I will admit, you know, it's you know, I got to see a lot of interesting things over over uh, time. You know, like times I went to work with them, and you know, you go down and sit in Kennedy's car that he was shot in, and right, you yeah. know, you run around you go down and, and like the bureau engraving area they had the train track that ran down the trains ran down in there uh-huh. and that's that's where they unloaded dfr i mean and everything because they didn't want everybody to see him when he, you know he was in his wheelchair and so right. forth but it was yep. kind of neat you know when they had that all laid out and and you know the history of that all and showing it was really interesting like i said it was there's a lot of stuff you know you cool and uh, there was a, years ago, there was a series on cable about uh, railway and subway and stuff like that. And they uncovered that subway station that they used um, to move him in and out of the wheelchair when he was yeah. in a wheelchair when yeah, he yeah. came to New York. It was, it was and, like the uh, hidden something because they did one. They did like all different. Yeah, stuff. it was a hidden station, and they yeah. and they somehow, somehow they closed up the walls on both sides, and then they wound up excavating it, and there was a train car still sitting in there. Right, 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 right. Yeah, the time, yeah. and I'm like, wow, that's like that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. you know. Because there's like so many different levels of the of the subway in New York City. It's like oh yeah, yeah. there's like, yeah all the different levels. There's a you know power, gas, water. There's all sorts of yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, really yeah I got a, I got a friend that works for the metro, you know, the DC one here. And every once in a while, he'll snap a photo, and he'll be you know it's like you know you're you're 55 feet down in the ground, and you'll see, like you said, the different levels for where they yeah. run the stuff. I mean, it's like crazy stuff. He, yeah. And they have, uh, like, these huge-ass air fans, you know, to move the air around down there and so forth that he's got a service. It's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that's the stuff that I think more people would be interesting to know what how it works or whatever. Yeah, you don't really. realize it. Just no, it I saw that same series that John was talking about. It was on. It was on cable a couple of years ago, and it was like every week. I couldn't wait to see because they yeah. did different cities, you know, and like in Boston had a lot of stuff. Detroit had a had a bunch of shit too. So it was pretty cool. It was. Yeah. It was they Crazy. did. Most yeah, that was a good. That was a good episode on how they did all of that uh, modernization in Boston. Yeah. Yeah moved a whole bunch of stuff and it had to excavate you know so far uh-huh. down and 
there was all kinds of things that they had to worry about you know gas was at one level water was at another level electric cable you know right. all kinds of stuff i'm like wow just to just to change the the system and the roadways there to get rid of traffic yeah in you know downtown boston and that was a lot of work yeah 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 cool stuff mm, that's crazy stuff so brian i saw something today that 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 i think is kind of revolutionary i saw the new matco uh pneumatic ratchet with the removable pole and it's switchable like it was quarter and three eighths and the other was three eighths and a half inch and the thing had a clutch on it really? no uh matt go huh it's not matt mac it's mac mac yeah I'm thinking like is that gonna hold up i'm wondering because you can you actually pull the you know the three eighths paul out of the we, out of the we, we had that we had that 25 years ago Okay, but hold on now. Twenty five years ago, is it twenty five years ago? Mac and Matt go were well. Similar. We the only thing the only thing that before then and, and during a certain time period, the only thing that Maco ever did was make the toolboxes for Mac. That's where we came from. We made tool. That's all we ever did originally was okay. toolboxes. So okay. did you guys made my maximizer toolbox. Uh, we could have. What year was it? Uh, ninety-one. Uh, no. So you tell no, me that, that, top... that was made in China? <laughs> uh, I don't know who may end up making that. I would have to go back and look. But we we made. I mean, that's all Macro ever did, and that's all we really do. But we had. You're talking about on the air tool, right? Where the yeah. where the insert, yeah. We we had um, a set of sockets and ratchets and an air tool uh, that were passed through, and uh, I, I wish I wish we still made them because did they hold up? Did oh yeah. Be, okay, so that's the only thing I looked at. Like, is that going to hold up? And it was cool because you could, you know, with the with the the bigger one, you had three eighths and a half inch, but the head was still kind of narrow. Actually, the small one, it's it's three eighths and a quarter, and now you have this little tiny compact ratchet. You know, I mean, it's pneumatic, so it's got it's got some, you know. So now, now I know this isn't the air. I think my air one's over there in the drawer. I have to go look in a minute. But how so did this wife come in and out? See, this was a three eighths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was on a ratchet. And like I said, these were the best. It's had how do you lock and unlock that thing? There's a circlip in it. Now, like this is a uh, uh, eleven sixteenths socket, and as you can see, it was seat go through. Yeah, but you would pop that in, and there's your socket. Yeah. Oh wow, that's good if you have a stud, you know, a nut on a stud. Yeah, yeah they. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were really good, and like I said, I, I, I think over in the other box, I have the air tool. I, I know Steers was selling a set like that for a while. Craftsman had a set like that. Yeah, but so, uh, uh, this was um, uh, KD. Uh, yeah, a gear wrench or KD, but gear wrench makes something very similar to this. Yeah. Uh, but it's a little, it's what it's, uh, the gearing in it is a little bit more clunkier uh -huh. than this being fine. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, we had, that's, I, anytime I can find any of this stuff on eBay or somebody, you know, I go digging around in yard sales. I grab it because it's it's people look for it all the time. The quarter inch stuff is the best. Yeah, I mean it's small and it's very strong, low profile, and like I, I said, it. it was good. But um, cool. yeah, they held up. I mean, we didn't have much problem with the stuff. Cool. The biggest the biggest problem that you had now is that when you break the 
course, you can't find any parts. So when you break the anvil, if you break the anvil on it, you're yeah. kind of screwed. You, yeah. You're, that's what happened. I broke all my half inch ones and I can't find any. So I just had to use the uh, sockets. What the hell are you doing them. breaking half inch anvils? Yeah, that's that's pretty heavy. Uh, yeah. You know, you still you come got across like some stuff. Kind breaker of bar? Huh? Well, that's the problem. Breaker bar? Well, that's the problem when the 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 ratchet's already the the ratchet's twenty four inches. You kind of start using it as a breaker bar instead of actually yeah. using the. It's not using the right tool. Right. Well, yeah. Or are you like me and you're sliding a piece of chrome molly pipe over it now? <laughs> yeah, do a couple jumps on it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> or you get out the heat wrench. Yeah, good old heat you wrench. Know, I was in Lowe's yesterday, and they got all of those Craftsman boxes. And I'm like, you know, they're not charging much more than they were charging in the 70s for the, for those boxes. I paid $249 for the bottom and $249 for the top. Yeah. They're, like, they're like $299 now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Like, really, you could, I could literally get. It's slightly different design than it was back in the, you know, in the seventies. But those are still. I opened, up the, I opened up the drawer. The sides were like really thin, and it's like such a cheap box. It's a throwaway box. That's why it's. That's why it's only two ninety nine. Those are the red ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just like the old Christmas. All of a sudden, they have that black series. I forget what they call it. There was yeah, a yeah, those are a little bit better, and. Uh, that yeah, was a professional. Bit Lowe's. I don't know. If, does Lowe's not sell them anymore? They used to sell Cobalt. Yeah. Those were actually, I remember those were actually better than the stuff that they're selling now as craftsmen. And I'm like, God, oh, these things are terrible. I would actually go buy, if I was looking for a cheap box, I wouldn't buy that craftsman one. I would I would probably wind up going to uh, over to Harbor Freight and get one of their like icon boxes or something like that. They're not that cheap, really. They're not, they're not, they're not that cheap. cheap. I know. They're nice. It's a nice box, but you know, I, right now I don't. I don't need another toolbox. I got no room. I did. Oh my god! There's a on Facebook Marketplace. Uh -huh. There's a guy about 20 miles away from here that's selling these units i forget the name but when i saw the name i'm like oh i've heard of them and it's like a, a tall cabinet like seven foot tall cabinet with two big doors and then there's overheads with six doors and then there's a uh seven foot bottom box all different size drawers you know thin drawers deep drawers the whole deal and um and it's got this like seven foot by by thirty inch workbench top, but metal stainless steel top. And the guy's dumping these things. He's got two of them, eight hundred bucks each. Wow! Wow! Yeah, and I'm like, oh my god, it's worth buying it and just finding a place to stick it for a while. <laughs> well, you, you get know? that other shop. You gotta. You could do if you had a long wall. You could go Siamese them, have cabinets on the outside, cabinets coming across the top, and then 16 feet of workspace, all with, with tool drawers. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you get the Lista. Lista. Oh, Lista, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. Lista. And I know, you know, like all of the high-end pro stock guys and top fuel and funny cars, they all got Lista cabinets in those 53-foot trailers. Yep. Is there like, you know, you, you touch the handle and it unlocks and the thing pulls out like butter and you let it go and it automatically closes and latches. And that's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Yeah, just, yeah. Just dumping them and they were blue. Blue nice. with a stainless steel top. And I'm like, oh, my God. Sweet. If I had that other shop already, I would have jumped on that, man. I would have yeah, yeah. got the money to that guy ASAP. Literally like a... 30 minute ride from my shop. Good. Yeah, I, man, I'd go find them. If you, even if you got to put them in the backyard for a couple months. Yeah. You can't beat true. that price. You no. Can't beat, no way. No Hell way. No. That's, it's probably about 
five or six thousand dollars worth of listed yeah. cabinets. Easy, easy, easily, right? No yeah, tools, they, uh, just cabinets. List uh, uh, made uh, the uh, the cabinets for inside our tool trucks, right? Stuff that you so, know is going to be there for 20, 30 years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they did, they also did like our specialty tool, in our specialty tool room. We had these uh, at the dealership. We had these, um, they were like 31 by 31 squares and they were like 48 inches high. And they had all the drawers and they had all the cutouts for all the specialty tools to go in. Right. And yeah. of course, that went across the back wall, which when you put them all together, it made a workspace area. Sure. And uh, but uh, those those cabinets were badass because, like I said, the drawers and the and the like you said, all you had to do was just pull them up and just tighten. They self closed, and yeah. uh, they had uh, you could change the racks. Like I said, you could put all the specialty tools in. Yep. Pretty cool. Yeah, those are those are like you know Ferraris or toolboxes. One of the yeah. nicest things I ever saw was there's a guy, big BMW motorcycle guy here. He's either in Huntington or Northport. I went to his house at night. I saved it in my GPS. So I don't remember. And he is like world known. He goes to Germany all the time, and he's he's a a world renowned expert on early BMWs. So his garage, it's a workshop. And he fashioned it after a BMW motorcycle service facility from like the 30s. Mm. And, and, it, and there's no toolboxes. He's got wooden cabinets, drawers. And every drawer had cutouts for the tools. And then, of course, the workbench. So it looked like you were in like a woodworker's shop or a kitchen or something. It did That's look a lot like of work to build it, all of those inserts. But this, I think he got them from Germany. I think he got them out of an old okay. shop. You know, and, it, and just sent them over. It was like gorgeous stuff, like all all recessed handles, like D-ring handles you pull out, and they were just and and the drawers opened just seamlessly, perfectly. It was very very impressive. Like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, that was uh, like I said, those are really good. And there's another company. Can't remember. I don't know if they're. I don't know if they're part of that list, of, but man, I tell you, they make some nice shit. Expensive. So, yeah. Yeah, but oh well. I don't know, guys. I want to have to get ready and get back to the grind. Yeah. Can't be playing. I can't be playing around. I got to go out and sling some chrome and collect some money. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Run some credit cards. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I got ran. It, I got it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I already did them this this afternoon. I got I got home kind of early today. Yeah, I've only I kind of only been working half days or whatever, and kind of slacking off. I need to get back to the grind. So yeah, you need time for yourself too. You got to get your head. You know, you got to yeah, get know. yourself and your family. It's it's uh it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. Uh, Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks, but uh hopefully uh, my brother my brother's coming back home. He's going back up to New York there, so um Yeah. We'll see how mom handles it next week when my brother leaves. Oh, uh, wow. yeah. That's going to be a that's going to be a big change for her. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Well, uh, you know, she says she's all right now and I said, "Yeah, but now. you know, yeah. Sean's home. You know, Sean's been home and I said, when he leaves, I mean, the house is empty then, you know, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Now it's really empty, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, it, like I said, I don't know. I'll have to move one of the girls in. To I was just going to say, rotate your daughters <laughs> in and out every week. <laughs> I don't know. I better watch it because the wife might send me back home. You'll, get it, you'll, get, you'll find your name on the list of rotation. Like, hey, wait a minute. What am I doing up there? How come I got double duty? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta be careful about that because, like I said, yeah. Uh, yeah, I might, I might be sent, uh, sent for rotation and come yeah. back and realize the key doesn't work anymore yeah. or something. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, get in. 
<laughs> gotta leave the gotta leave the garage unlocked, right? Yeah, so I can yeah, climb yeah. over the Mustang. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. <coughs> well, that sounds good. All right. All right, brother. All right, so guys. John, oh, before we go, John, John, so are you just gonna take the one wire out of that harness and stick it in the harness that you have? That's all I gotta do. Well, now that you know what it looks like, why can't you just make the wire and the connector and, and send that back to Holly and tell him to stick it? What do you mean? Just replicate the other half of the harness, make it yourself, and send that one back. It's, it's special. That's the problem. You need that, right. You need that. Oh, okay. you need that. This thing here, I have to take the back of the dash panel off, and there's a female jack that this plugs into. So yeah. this is your I.O. It's a an oh. IO converter box. Oh, All I see. It is, is it's just a way of plugging stuff in. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, IO is input output. That's that's yeah. what I mean. But you know, I have this whole harness here, and I only need this one wire with this plug on the end. That's and I'm gonna literally use a foot of this wire. It's like 12 feet long. Right, right, right. It's a, well, that's, that's how, why what do you think about a foot of it? That's why you had the floor mat. You just hook up the wire and then throw the rest under the floor yeah. mat, and you're done. <laughs> well, yeah, just, I, no, you, just hang the, you hang the whole loop over the parking brake or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The gas gauge wire is already run. Yeah, yeah. It's already the there. Panel. Sure, it's there already, right. It's right there. It's yeah. waiting for me to terminate the end. Right. But what I'm going to do is I'll put – I'm not gonna do like a butt connector. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do like a weather pack, one one connect one conductor weather pack on it. That way if you gotta pull the dash, you could just yank it out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, they're they're not stupid because they give you this all this harness stuff here and it comes in a bag in a way that you ain't getting it out of the bag and resealing it. Right, yeah. right. It's, so it's not like I can problem. go in there and, and pilfer stuff right. and then send it back to Holly. Yeah. yeah. That's it. We're, we're stuck. Mm. Right. So it's crazy. Rocco's like, just, just buy it. Just buy it yeah. so you can get it done. Yeah. So you can start the car. Like, hey, okay, at that point, yeah. 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 I had to call my glass guy in again because we got the windows in my car, but they're not right. Even, even the guys at the body shop, they, they don't know what they're doing. So they're, they're not perfect. And my friend Jeff had them dead nuts perfect. So yeah. he got a hold of me today, and I, he goes, what would you do? What would you do? I'm like, well, we had to take the glass out to get the belt line molding off. I said, we put them back in, but they're not right, Jeff. I said, they, they work. The left side is tight. I said, they just need you to tweak them. He's like, all right, all right. I'll get you know. so, Yeah, I am, I am not looking forward to doing that. that. No. No, you got to pay. You got to just pay a guy who knows. I saw he did it the first time. He went through, took all the glass out, went through the regulators, cleaned everything, and he had those windows working beautifully. Yeah. Uh, so I just got to, I just got to pay him to fix the two. I got, got to do it. You got to have it. Sure. Yeah. Is your glass still good? Oh yeah, yeah. It's all original glass. It's all fine. It's all in good shape. Yeah, no scratches. That's cool. No Actually, yeah, it's all good glass. So. Yeah, I got good. a black glass. I don't have glass at all. I got yeah. nothing. But it's not expensive. Depending you know? on the car, no. No. I'm looking around, you know, from the restoration companies. Uh, I got that really big one down here in Ocala. Right. And it's, it's like 400 bucks for the four windows. Okay. I was going to say, back glass tends to get a little pricey because they would never change. I mean, windshields, they always had stock on windshields because they got cracked. Mm -hmm. But and side glass too, but the back glass not so much, you know. Yeah. So yeah. That's why when I got rid of my seventy one boat tail Riviera, I got that rear it's glass yes. under my pool deck. <laughs> Someday somebody will need that, hopefully, and I'll be able to sell that for a nice chunk. Yeah. Yeah. It's a back Corvette window, but bigger. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We had we had one of the yeah. I had one of those sitting at a body shop for like 10 years yeah and uh man that was a big car it is mm. big car long nose yeah 
Oh, yeah. I had my 73 Monte Carlo, and my brother had a 71 Riv. And we would always compare whose car was longer, whose car was faster, whose car. Well, the Riv was definitely wider. The doors were just about the same. They were both long, you know, long two-passenger doors. Um, but the, the, the Monte was more like a stiletto. It was narrow, had fender peaks, and it was, it was actually a better driving, better handling car once you did some suspension mods. And the rib just had those flat, wide fenders. It was just, it was just more of a boat. Just, uh, <laughs> but again, another, another great car. I, I would have another one. I saved the seats and the console out of it too. I have those over in the garage. That's cool. Oh, the seat, yeah. I saved the bucket seats and the console. The console isn't flat. It's, it's on an angle. So it pissed me off. You can never put like a cup of coffee on it because it was angled and oh it was, yeah that's right it was tilted to the driver right? yeah tilted to the yeah. driver and the uh the shifter is like uh it's not a horseshoe shifter like a chevelle it's like a reverse seven i think i forget now exactly and you pull up on the handle but yeah yeah it's crazy yeah hmm. oh right. well all right guys. all right guys i'm out we'll talk to you soon yeah, definitely. Sounds good. All right. Good night. You guys, fellas. take care. I'll see y'all. Okay. Bye. Good night.